Hi, and welcome to Give for Dreams, Clayton State's 24-hour day of giving. I'm Claire Monroe, your host for most of the day, and we have an amazing show planned for you to highlight the innovative work, creativity, and achievements made right here at Clayton State University. I am so excited to be joined today by my co-host, Royal Baxter, who is the Associate Director of Campus Life. Good morning. Good morning, Claire. I am so glad to be here this morning. We've been having fun already, so we're glad that you guys are along for the ride now. Give for Dreams is in its third year, and we hope to be able to make even more dreams real this year, thanks to everyone's generosity. There, right. there are 13 projects you can choose from to give, and again this year we're offering incentive challenges throughout the day, thanks to our special donors, so we have so much exciting stuff coming up. Um, with these incentive challenges, remember that the project with the highest number of unique donors, That's right. it only counts once, That's right. actually wins extra funding from some of our generous partners today. So we're really looking forward to that, hopefully a little friendly competition to heat things up. And there are several ways to give. Tell us about them. There are several ways to give. First of all, make sure you are giving. If you're tech savvy like me, you can text some different numbers to the code uh, 555-888 to receive a giving form, and then you can make your contribution that way. There are several codes you can give to, all kind of different um, incentives that will be given to the ones who re raise the most. Um, I'm kind of banking on alumni. Uh, uh, yeah, we're proud absolutely, alumni. proud alumni here. You can visit us right here in the James M. Baker University Center. Don't you want to come see me and Claire? Come see us, come hang out. We're fun, it's come be fun. see us. You yeah. can also give us a call and we will take your donation that way. Yes, yeah, 678. 466-4470 is the phone number to call. By the end of the day, I'm going to have that memorized. Okay, I got you. And we hope that you all memorize it because you're going to dial it and you're going to give to Give for Dreams this morning. So as we get started, this is super exciting. Okay. We can proudly announce that MailChimp, who is a great partner to the university, has made a $100,000 gift to the wow. College of Information and Mathematical Sciences to support the Launchpad Academy program and scholarships for students that is so fabulous. MailChimp, thank you very thank you, much. Thank you, thank, thank, you, you, thank you, thank you. We are gonna take a quick break. We're gonna regroup ourselves so you can get your phone ready to dial or text. Or text. Okay, we've got ours too. Text, okay. text, text. And we are gonna come back and um, talk to the head of the university's foundation board yeah. um, about what a great impact that organization's making on the university. Stick around. Sounds good. You're in luck, because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Nice. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> Welcome back. We are here this morning with one of our first of many guests, um, Mr. Jack Hancock, who is chair of the CSU Foundation. Jack, thank you so much for coming in this morning. We appreciate it. Now, in this last year, 
talk to us about how the foundation has helped to support the university's strategic priorities and you know this growing need for a highly skilled, educated workforce in this region. Ladies, let me thank you all for what you're doing. It's important to us and to the university. Uh, I think the most important thing that the foundation has done in the last year, uh, been many things you'll hear about all day, mm -hmm. but, but the university's priority is to educate people mm -hmm. and to prepare them for the workforce. And I'm proud to say that the foundation has been able to play an integral part through the funds that we've raised in assuring that people who might not have been able to finish their education here have done so and are continuing to do so uh, because of the generosity of the people who give today. That is awesome. So Jack, Clayton State continues to have influence in South Metro Atlanta with its proximity to the airport and strong relationships with local businesses, community, and the state's leading industries. Now, how do you think Clayton State will continue to build on this impact? I think you'll, you will see Clayton State continue to be a major player in all areas uh, of the South Metro. I think specifically you're going to see university take a very integral role in developing a leadership program uh, that is going to be very critical in, in developing future leaders for our region. Awesome. All right, so plug for today. Why is Give for Dreams such an important part of supporting Clayton State's goal of making students' dreams real? Well, you know, most people are not like you and I who can, you know, who can eat bonbons in the morning and, you know, we don't have anything important to do. We, <laughs> <laughs> ser oh, seriously, uh, Clayton, uh, Give for Dreams gives us the opportunity to focus this day and look at what this university has done, what it is doing, and what it's going to do. And to get that message out to a broad base of people and show them what they can do to be a part of that, uh, that's the purpose of the day. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being here sure. to help us kick it off and yes. get things started off wonderfully. We are off to a great start. Let me refresh the website really quickly. We have raised more than $10,000 already. $10,280. Woohoo! Thanks to 125 generous donors. That is awesome. That That's is so good. Awesome. We're so excited. So, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about keeping the pace here at Clayton State. Keeping the pace. I like it. Stay with us. because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs>
Thanks for your invitation. Welcome back, everyone. So I have a donation update. Okay. Student Affairs won the early bird incentive and earned an additional $1,000. Great job, Student Affairs. Yay! Okay. So Partner Academics and Community Engagement, or PACE, gives faculty the opportunity to incorporate service learning projects into their curriculum. For a group of public relations and film students, their PACE project supported an indie film produced by one of our film professors. Here with us is Professor Chandra McDonald and Alicia Hamilton. Glad to have you all here. Hi, glad to Thanks be, for glad being to be here. here. Awesome. So, Dr. Uh, Professor uh, McDonald, how did you work with um, Pace to create this project to support our film? Well, I had a great opportunity. <laughs> Their professor, Dr. Alvarez, is a good friend of mine, and she knew that I had a feature film titled Jen, who was winning lots of awards and film festivals. And but you know it was it was an independent film, and so we needed some some grassroots support <laughs> with social media and kind of between our film festival to the release of the film on Amazon Prime, which it is on right now. We needed some really clever, strategic. PR and marketing from individuals and I knew that she always had great students in her classes awesome. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened and what occurred. Awesome. So Alicia, what specifically were you and your classmates asked to do um, for this film? So for the film, Jen, there were three of us, including myself, uh, actually four of us, including myself, working on the film. And we focused on creating a Wikipedia page for the film. We also did strategizing for grassroots marketing mm -hmm. and we worked on social media marketing for the film as well. Awesome. That sounds great. Alicia, so <laughs> share with us, what would you say you learned about public relations and promotions from this experience? I would say lots of soft skills, teamwork, adaptability, flexibility, um, the need to keep an open mind and be adaptable and prioritize because we are working on multiple projects. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and those are such important life those skills. Are the they life really skills are. We're Lots for. of personalities, really and they, they have to learn how to balance them being from PR, marketing. They did a very good job with that. Awesome. Yes. So, Pace allowed the, you know, the film, the PR, those classes to come together and collaborate. Why do you think learning experiences like that are so important for students? Well, experiential learning is, is just a must for students. They, you know, they have to be able to, we don't want them to go into the marketplace and be shocked by the demands of working with clients, interacting with individuals. This gives them some time when they're safely in our nest <laughs> to be able to transition into those worlds. I mean, it's, it's the best way for them to be ready for the workforce. Absolutely. Ladies, thank you both for spending some time with us this morning. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate all of the effort and the hard work that you put into this project. Mm -hmm. So Amazon Prime is where you can find yes, the Yes, you can the find film. Jen on Amazon Prime. Awesome. So we <laughs> want everybody to check that out. And then we also, of course, want everyone to donate yes, to Get for Dreams to support projects like PACE, alumni, scholarships, everything. We have 13 projects that you can choose from this year. And um, your money can go a long way to making dreams real for students. That's the right. And again, what you're finding out this morning is that um, when you could, when you donate to initiatives like this, they go to sort of the soft skills that our student is mentioned getting. So it is super important for you to know that every dollar actually counts, and our dreams are being made real. So again, thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Professor McDonald. They oh, sure you. are. So oh. that's that's why we need everyone to give this morning. That's why we need you to support projects like PACE. You can donate to the project Dream of Your Choice. Oh, um, awesome. I know. So you really get to self-direct. Where do you want your money to go? How do you want it to make an impact? So be sure to name the specific area or project on your donation form like PACE, where like you PACE. want your donation to go. Um, the number to call, 678-466-4470. Text 555-888 um, or just come visit us and come hang yeah, out for a little fun. while. Yeah, we're having fun. Um, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, um, we're going to strike a, a dear chord to me. We're going to talk about the College of Health. <laughs> so, yes, I am definitely a non-traditional student. Um, I am not a sit behind a desk stare at a computer, sit in meetings, do phone calls. I'm very much a hands-on person. I want to be hands-on. My father was a paramedic EMT um, growing up, so having conversations with him at the dinner table, listening to 
his days at the fire department at night and the calls that he went on and and the people that would come back and see him at the fire department he was the first one on the scene and he saved either their life or their child's life there were several things that led me toward that the nursing industry and caring for others sometimes it's not the band-aid that you put on or the IV that you run it's letting them know that it will get better I've been lucky enough in my life I've done quite a bit of traveling outside of the US this was my first time doing a study abroad in reference traveling outside of the country for school you know you, you see what those nurses do with the limited resources they have it helps us to learn who do we want to be as nurses what kind of care do we want to provide our patients what do we want to come back here and what do we want to try to change? And we can't do that without experiences and without funding individuals to take these trips and have these experiences. It's life changing to be able to experience the programs. It was a dream for me, but that dream became a reality and I'm forever grateful. And I can't wait till the day that I'm able to give back to that program. Wrong top you, huh? Gosh, Omar, today's gift for dreams. I really want to help, but I just don't know how to give. Gee whiz, that is a problem. But you're in luck because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678 466 4470. You can text to give. Make sure. You know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. Go online and visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> Hello everyone, we're back. Our broadcast is just beginning for Gift for Dreams. We have so much more in store for you all today. We kicked off a new incentive challenge Ooh. starting at 10 a.m. I know, sometimes it's fun to up the ante for folks yes, a little it is. bit. So we kicked off this new incentive challenge from 10 a.m. to noon. The Clayton State University Foundation is sponsoring our lunchtime challenge. So the project that has the most unique donors between now and noon wins an extra Two grand, two thousand dollars. So wow. help the project of your choice by giving now. Okay, I, I'm going to be making my donation during this time. Although I have a few split allegiances here, I may have to. Same here. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, <laughs> so we are going to um, start things off now with the College of Health near and dear to my heart. I graduated sure as a nursing student in 2015. Oh, gosh, years, I know. So let's introduce our first guest. We have Dr. Lisa Eichenberger, Dean of the College of Health, and Dr. Susan Sanner, Associate Professor of Nursing, to talk more about the College of Health project. Welcome, ladies. We're Thank you. Thank you so here. much for having us. So how will this year's gift um, during Give for Dreams support the College of Health? Well, the College of Health does many, many things throughout the year, but um, this year we're t going to take the donations and help it to use student projects. Um, we have many different 
uh, programs within the College of Health. We have dental hygiene, we have majors in health sciences, health care management, as well as the nursing program. Um, and so each within each one of those programs, uh, they have student initiatives. So all of the donations that will be given to the, this year's Give for Dreams will be used for student projects within each one of those programs. Wow. Kind of sharing the wealth with everybody. That's right. Good. That's right. Good. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. So, ladies, healthcare is currently a hot topic at the Georgia Capitol. So, whether <laughs> yes. it be discussions about Medicare or state's maternal uh, mortality rate, how is the college preparing students to tackle these challenges and provide the best care? Well, we we are we work with our students at the graduate and undergraduate levels to incorporate not only assignments, projects throughout their courses, but where, where they do that in their didactic information. But when they go out and really get hands on, they actually go to the Capitol. They actually participate in the legislative process. Faculty are involved, and so we take students with us. And when there's an initiative or a vote coming up, we uh, uh, notify our students immediately to get in there and contact, send a letter to your legislators. Um, and just really hands-on, and then we integrate legislative issues all throughout the curriculum. Real-time friends. Absolutely. Real -time. Yeah. Absolutely, and real-time learning that will ultimately affect their practice. That's right. right. So give us the plug. Why should people donate to the College of Health today? Well, <laughs> our students have so many needs, um, and we've seen our projects throughout the years through, this, through the Give for Dreams project. Uh, donations really make a difference and you're going to hear later from our, our students and some of the recipients of these uh, funds it really makes a difference in what they're able to do while they're here at Clayton State and these projects are really life-changing for our students that you're going to hear about and so the dollars that they give today will help them be able to help buy equipment for them, whether it's a dental hygiene pro program, or maybe take a study abroad trip that they would not be able to do. Uh, and it really makes a difference in the quality of the education that they get while they're here. Awesome. Ladies, thank you so much for spending some time thank with you. us this morning. You're we so appreciate welcome. it. Absolutely. So if you want to give to the College of Health, make sure you text G4 D4 to 555-888 so that you can make your donation specifically to the College of Health. Thank you again, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Now let's take a look at a video that highlights how the College of Health will be using your donations. So yes, I am definitely a non-traditional student. Um, I am not a sit behind a desk, stare at a computer, sit in meetings, do phone calls. I'm very much a hands-on person. I want to be hands-on. My father was a paramedic EMT um, growing up, so having conversations with him at the dinner table, listening to his days at the fire department at night and the calls that he went on and, and the people that would come back and see him at the fire department, he was the first one on the scene and he saved either their life or their child's life. There were several things that led me toward the, the nursing industry and caring for others. Sometimes it's not the Band-Aid that you put on or the IV that you run. It's letting them know that it will get better. I've been lucky enough in my life, I've done quite a bit of traveling outside of the U.S. This was my first time doing a study abroad in reference, traveling outside of the country for school. You know, you see what those nurses do with the limited resources they have. It helps us to learn who do we want to be as nurses? What kind of care do we want to provide our patients? What do we want to come back here and what do we want to try to change? And we can't do that without experiences in without funding individuals to take these trips and have these experiences. It's life-changing to be able to experience the programs. It was a dream for me, but that dream became a reality and I'm forever grateful. And I can't wait till the day that I'm able to give back to that program. What's wrong? 
on top of you, huh? Gosh, Omar, today's gift for dreams. I really want to help, but I just don't know how to give. Gee whiz, that is a problem. But you're in luck because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. Go online and visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Nice. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs>so if you're still deciding whether or not to give to the College of Health, let, let me just tell you, I'm gonna be straight up with you, I got my nursing degree at Clayton State. That's how I got to where I am today. It's the education that I got here and it's the contacts that I made through my clinical experiences through Clayton State that got me where I am. Come on. You know, so, yeah, come on. Come on, College of Health. So Clayton State is also helping our next guest on her journey toward becoming a nurse. We're so exciting to, excited to welcome Christy Gold and Dr. Victoria Foster, who is an assistant professor of nursing. So thanks, ladies, for coming in this morning. Yes, yes. Welcome. So hello, Christy. Hello, Dr. Good Forrester. Morning. Hello. Good morning. So Christy, we're going to start with you. You and several nursing students got a chance to work alongside healthcare professionals in Guadalajara, Mexico. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? I, there is not a word that I can even tell you to describe it. It was absolutely one of the most incredible experiences that I've ever been a part of. Being able to be there and work side by side with these nurses in the hospital and to see what they do with the supplies that they have, which yeah. is not a lot, yeah. is absolutely moving because they're truly, you know, what we learn here it, it's the fundamental basics of nursing. That's what they have to work with. So getting to step outside the classroom, outside of our hospitals here that have all of the amazing technology that we're, we're used to using, and you, you step into another country that doesn't have that luxury, and you see the, the quality care that those nurses are able to provide with very few resource, resources is so moving and touching in so many ways. I will wow. never forget it. Super awesome. And that is that is such a different side of healthcare, you know, yes, than what is. we see here. What did you take away from that experience about the value of having access to quality health care? You know, the, quality health care is a topic that comes up quite a lot and people unfortunately that don't have the experience of traveling to other countries that the access to care is so limited don't understand how fortunate we are. When I was in Guadalajara, I was taking care of patients that at 20 years old were in, you know, their kidneys were failing, they had lost their eyesight from something, you hate to say it, as simple as being a diabetic because it is so expensive that they don't take insulin daily, they don't check their blood sugars, they just take random doses whenever they can get their hands on those supplies. You know, you, we would go to the hospital in the mornings for our, to start of our shift and you would see a line a half a mile out of the hospital just waiting to wow. get into the hospital. Wow. So when I came back, it, it gives you a newfound appreciation for being able to walk into a hospital and being able to be seen no matter what your status is. And you appreciate just some, you have a newfound appreciation for the little things that you're able to get that in other countries never have the opportunity and it ends up costing them their life at a young age because of that. So Dr. Foster, yes. please share with us why the study abroad experience is essential to our nursing students and their clinical experience here. Well, you know, we're big on cultural diversity and um, that's important to the mission of the university. So, um, 
as our students go out and practice in the settings here, they are exposed to cultural diversity. However, going on somebody else's turf and living in their homes and practicing on, in their facilities is totally different. I mean, you're immersed in the culture. Mm -hmm. We had to take Spanish classes so we can communicate a little bit better with this, um, the faculty and the, and the other workers there. Mm -hmm. So it was just awesome. And I, I just think it's important because it, it broadens the uh, student's perspective. Right. And it also creates, like she said, there was a lot of limited resources. So it um, creates a, a increases compassion when the students come back so I get to hear the stories and I myself you know I'm pretty stern in the clinical setting and I never cry and I found myself tearing up and I had to excuse wow. myself one time from the students and said I'll be right back it's just because of the things you see so I think it helps once we come back and we, we, we have abundance of resources however there are certain populations that don't in certain hospitals and certain rural hospitals and so I just think it helps broaden that piece for nurses and you know we're all in this together and we want everybody to experience um, health care in, in, in a good way. So in addition to the fundamental basics as Christy was saying gaining that appreciation for what we do have over here. Right. What you an know. awesome, awesome experience. Yes, and um, just another thing, the nurses there had to buy their, buy their own supplies down to a thermometer. Wow. So we were able to take some supplies to the nurses, and so we were able to help out that way. Beautiful. Too. That's terrific. Now, can both of you tell us why people should donate today during Gift for Dreams to the College of Health? Okay. I guess from a physiological standpoint, it increases endorphins, doing good stuff for people. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so it's helpful in that way. But I just think we should all just kind of pay it forward. You know, mm -hmm. my mom always said, if you can help a person, reach back and help that person that's and right. make society better as a whole. So mm -hmm. those are my two points. <laughs> For me, being a non-traditional student and having other experiences, it's you can only learn so much in a classroom. There's, yeah. there's de definite parameters that stop you from learning outside of that. So being able to take those funds and provide experiences like this, this is what's going to help mold and shape your future nurses. And you want those nurses to not only go out into the world prepared and practice here, but you want them to be able to understand what it's like to be other places and practice and to be able to give back as well. And the knowledge that they gain, the knowledge that I've gained, will forever be ingrained in me. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank and ladies, you. thank y'all both so much for taking time with yes, us thank today. You. Thank you for having thank us. You. So we have a donation update. Ooh, they did their job yeah. because the College of Health made, made its it goal. It go. And I just refreshed our computer screen here. $19,582 wow. total. 148 generous donors. Okay, so that is awesome. That is so good. Yeah. That's 12% of our goal. We'll still so it's a big a number, go, but it's a little number. Okay, so thank you to everyone who's made a contribution. I mean, your gifts are what empowers our students, like Christy and so many others, That's right. to make their dreams real. So continue to send in those donations. Don't forget that our University Foundation Trustees Incentive Challenge is still yes. going on. And the project that has the most unique donors will get an extra $2,000. That is huge. Yes, that, that is, is big. big. So after our break, we will talk to Sims, Stick around and go give, 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 give. Because there are four 
easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. Go online and visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Nice. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs>
So why should donors support SIMS today as part of Give for Dreams? Okay. Well, a lot of the kinds of activities I'm talking about can only be funded by donations. Uh, you know, we can't, it's not only that we have to allocate our different funds to other sources, but some of them simply cannot be used for support of students, for conferences, for travel, for some instruments that they might need if they're doing something technical in a lab type environment, and for collaboration with other people both in and outside the state. So those are essential to, for making our students experts. Okay. Sounds great. So remember, text G4D3. That's how you're going to give or specify that you want to give to Sims. Mm -hmm. And so far, the Sims folks are stepping up. I just refreshed, and it looks like Sims has already raised $1,100 this wow. morning. Wow. Good so job, Sims. Good job, there Sims. There you go. Nice work. So we are actually now going to hear from a student about how Sims helped prepare them for their career path. My name is Ashley Maines. I am currently an information technology major with a focus in computer science. I always, like ever since I was like a really little kid, I was interested in technology and computers. And I mean, at first I never really thought of it past a hobby. I really truly believe that this is a good time for women to get into STEM just because, you know, especially IT, it's constantly evolving, it's constantly changing, it's not going, it's not going to go away, especially, you know, science, um, mathematics. It touches every single industry in the world. This is such a good field for women to go into that. If I had a chance to talk to the donors or the potential donors uh, that would give money to Clayton State for, that, for the opportunities that I was given this past year, I would tell them, like, please really consider it because there are so many doors that were opened for me professionally that I didn't have before. Um, they, there's, so many, there's so much networking that, got, get, that comes from this. Like there have been faculty members on campus that I've been introduced because of it, and those connections will benefit my professional career for the rest of my life. Giving a student a chance to open those doors, a chance to go to these conventions where they learn from people who are like the leaders in the field. Like this is this is this is what's most important. Build the society, build the community around it. All right, so as you can see, Clayton State University is creating the necessary partnerships to ensure our students are getting real world experience with top companies here in Atlanta. Let's welcome Ashley Maines and Vicki Bodman of MailChimp to the broadcast today to talk about the Launchpad Academy. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So Ashley, you had an opportunity to participate in a new program here at Clayton State called the Launchpad Academy. How was the experience and what was it like visiting the MailChimp offices in downtown Atlanta? Uh, in one word, amazing. And, and another, <laughs> inspiring. Because uh, getting to go to MailChimp's office, you know, kind of tour their facilities, tour their data center, it kind of uh, opened up the world for me uh, on the industry side because all I've known is the academia side so far. So being able to see what uh, they what they do on a daily basis, uh, how creative they are about problem solving and tech uh, for their platform was just inspiring for me awesome. to, to do. Yeah. And Vicki, you were one of several staff members who were selected actually to teach the students lessons on topics like cloud computing, data infrastructure. What were some of the things you talked with them about and what was it like to work directly with the students who want to be you when they grow up? Yeah, I'm going to reverse your questions because I'm going to steal uh, Ashley's answer. It was inspiring <laughs> and amazing. Um, it's, it's always fun to, to work with college students, but this is a little different for me. Um, I felt like the students that we interacted with were, were um, more invested and, and really, really interested in what we were doing and saying. 
Um, some of the topics we covered, um, my partner and I were supposed to be talking about infrastructure and, and cloud computing. And when we started putting together a three-hour class, we realized that that's really like a 10-year class. Mm -hmm. And so what we decided to do is focus on one of the things we have to teach new people when they come in, which is troubleshooting. So okay. Okay. students are typically taught to troubleshoot like the code that they're writing or the one thing that they're doing, but when they get into the workforce, it's, it's a system that goes. So your code could be logically correct and syntactically correct, but it not do what it's supposed to do. Uh. So we tried to teach them like how to look outside exactly what they were doing sort of end to end um, and some strategies on that. Those, those are things that are really well, helpful even in, in MailChimp, but really everywhere. Yeah. yeah, so cool. Again, real world stuff. Right. <laughs> real world, real time, real uh, practice, right? So Ashley, how has this experience helped guide your career goals? Well, uh, one of the things kind of hopping off of what Vicki said, like with the whole, her class in troubleshooting actually helped me in my current part-time position uh, as a support specialist. So after taking her class, I was able to apply her skills a whole lot more to what I'm doing right now. But like looking towards the future, I, like computer science and, inf and information technology is such a broad field. So sometimes you can get lost in the weeds trying to find out like what it is you want to do. Uh, sure. with the rest of your career and that those classes helped silo uh, what I wanted what I liked about technology and kind of not and also gave me like the skills and like tools to start learning um, to start being a better version of myself when I when I go into the field that I want right. so so Vicki what was it like for you and, and the rest of your staff to partner with students and be able to offer that hands-on learning to them it was super energizing, right? You, you get into the day-to-day -day world um, and you sort of forget that there are new people coming on. And, <laughs> right. and, the, and, the, the, and, and they offer a different perspective for us. So in MailChimp, it's, having a diverse workforce is so important to us. And so it's been fun to um, to partner with, with Clayton State and to tap into a set of uh, talent that, frankly, I think the region has been ignoring. And we're super excited um, to be able to, to make an impact uh, with these students. Mm -hmm. It was inspiring and energizing. I think everyone I talked to, I, I talked to, I um, surveyed all of the folks who were teaching and they all came back to sort of re really re-energized and, yeah. and ready to sort of hit the ground running. Like we can make a difference and how do we make a difference um, in students' lives? And it was a lot of fun. Kind of a win-win on both sides. Yeah. Right? It absolutely, yeah, right. absolutely is. And that, again, at Milton, that's one of the things we focus on is how do we affect the community? And this is a huge way of affecting the community right now, but also long-term. Ladies, thank y'all so much yeah. for sharing your experiences and letting our viewers know about how MailChimp and Clayton State are partnering together to really shape education for our students. So yeah. we appreciate y'all being here. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Donation update. Let's Not yet. See. Not yet. Oh, Not yet. okay. But we're going to we update it in a minute. You. But we do need to remind you yeah, that there are several ways you can give, and specifically to Sims, mm -hmm. you can give by phone. 678-466-4470. Okay. Text. You can see it right there on your screen. Yep. You can text G4D3. That specifically will give you the form for Sims. So text G4 D3 to 555-888 and you'll receive the giving form for Sims. And of course we are continuing our lunchtime incentive challenge thanks to the CSU Foundation. The project with the most unique donors between now and noon wins an additional $2,000. So that's exciting. And you can always come and donate here at the University Center. We have some awesome folks who are here hanging out with us today taking your donations right here in person. So lots of ways to give. We're kind of awesome. Come see us. Come stop by. Come say hi. We would love to chat with you. We yes. may even give you an on-air shout out, right? Oh yeah. I think we Absolutely. can do that. I think we can totally do that. All Absolutely. right. So quick break. Let's take a quick break and when we return we'll talk to Presidential Scholar about the value of scholarships. So stay tuned. My name is Ashley Maines. I am currently an information technology major with a focus in computer science. I always, like ever since I was like a really little kid, I was interested in technology and computers. And I mean, at first I never really thought of it past a hobby. I really truly believe that this is a good time for women to get into STEM just because you know especially IT it's constantly evolving it's constantly changing it's not going it's not going to go away especially you know science um, mathematics 
it touches every single industry in the world. This is such a good field for women to go into that. If I had a chance to talk to the donors or the potential donors uh, that would give money to Clayton State for, that, for the opportunities that I was given this past year, I would tell them, like, please really consider it because there are so many doors that were opened for me professionally that I didn't have before. Um, they, there's, so many, there's so much networking that, get, get, that comes from this. Like there have been faculty members on campus that I've been introduced because of it, and those connections will benefit my professional career for the rest of my life. Giving a student a chance to open those doors, a chance to go to these conventions where they learn from people who are like the leaders in the field. Like this is this is this is what's most important. Build the society, build the community. The Presidential Scholarship is a great program because it rewards deserving freshmen. Um, who maintain a 3.5 or a higher GPA in high school and who have proven to be leaders in their community. Let's welcome one of our very own Presidential Scholars, Dean Brooks. Welcome, Dean. Hey, welcome, guys. Thank you. So, you're a Presidential Scholar here at Clayton State. Tell our viewers how earning the scholarship has personally helped you financially. Okay, so earning my scholarship um, has benefited me financially in a really huge way. So it's allowed me to uh, focus <clears throat> all my energy on you know, getting my education and focusing 100% on getting the best college experience that I possibly can here during my four years. Um, personally, if I wasn't on scholarship here, I'd be for forced to go find a job, go get some work, and find a way to support myself financially throughout the semester. So to have a scholarship that removes such a large financial burden from me is really, really meaningful and amazing and it has allowed me to focus more and more on my development and coursework here at Clayton State. And as a Presidential Scholar, you are also able to be part of the Clayton State University Honors Program. Yep. Um, talk with us about some of the activities, some of the things that have come along with being an honors student. Okay, so to be in the Honor Student Association, um, each member is required to meet a minimum amount of community service hours each semester. Um, so when I like to share my experiences, I like to talk about a lot of the community service that we do, because uh, giving back to our community and building up our community is, such, is really a core part of the mission at Clayton State University. So I like to share my experiences with things like Habitat for Humanity, where we physically built a home for a Clayton State University student who tragically lost their home uh, in an accident. And things like working with local governments and municipalities, like we, all, we work all the time with the city of Moro and the government of Lake City, and it always feels great to give back to our community. So I like talking about those activities where we really give back to our community and highlight the development. Can I just say I love Dean? I know, right? Oh my goodness, I love you so I know. much. I want to be him when I grow up. Me too. <laughs> Dean, share with us, what are your career plans? Okay, so I'm currently pursuing two, two plans right now. I have two uh, major paths that I'm looking at. The first one is public accounting. I always wanted to be a CPA, and I'm thinking about going to work in public accounting in the Atlanta area and getting my CPA shortly after graduation. And the other opportunity that I'm considering is becoming a financial analyst at my internship. I'm currently, uh, over the summer, I'll be interning in a corporate finance internship with Johnson & Johnson. So I'm thinking about pursuing becoming a financial analyst with Johnson & Johnson. Fantastic. Thank you. So either way, I mean, you have amazing opportunities definitely, in front of you. Definitely. Yeah. For people who are thinking about donating money today during Give for Dreams, why should they give, especially for scholarships? So I would encourage everyone who is a potential donor to donate and make it donate and become an official donor, um, specifically for scholarships, because you know giving a, a scholarship to a student is is way more than just paying their tuition. You know I like to think of it as a personal sponsorship that ensures that your dreams become a reality. You know that's a mission at Clayton State University, and to know that I have you know such a supporting network of. Uh, generous donors and support system here at Clayton State is really a huge deal to me. Uh, so yeah, I definitely encourage every uh, potential donor to reach out and donate and help support some awesome students at Clayton State. 
You heard Dean. First of all, thank you so much, Dean, for sharing your story. Very inspirational. Um, If it didn't inspire you to give, I don't know what else will. So, Dean, thank you so much. And if you haven't given yet, we hope that you will. Please remember that there is no amount that is too small. Mm -hmm. Every little bit helps. So far, we have another update. Mm -hmm. We have received, wait for it, over $27,000. That's so good. Thanks to all who have contributed so far. Continue to contribute. Remember, you can text uh, G4D3 if you want to get it for the College of Sims, 255-888. Or you can see all of the rest of the codes on your screen Mm -hmm. right now. Pick your choice. We don't care. We just want you to give (laughs) so that we can continue to make Dean's dreams and all of our other students' dreams come true. Up next, we will be welcoming the College of Arts and Sciences to the show. Because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. Welcome back to Give for Dreams, Clayton State University's annual day of giving. We are going to talk this hour about the College of Arts and Sciences, some opportunities students have to do some research, present that to a larger audience. Lots going on in this hour. If you are on social media, please come check us out. Um, Looking at the computer here, we've got lots of Instagramming going on. Remember to use that hashtag, give for dreams. You'll see some of our guests there, Dr. Foster, Dr. Sanner, Royal and me, lots of us um, just having a great time here. And 
making sure that we are supporting our students here at Clayton State University. That's what this is all about, is supporting our students and making their dreams real. You can, of course, go on the website to donate. You can also give via your mobile phone, okay, right here. Text G4D1. If you would like to donate to the College of Arts and Sciences, you text to 555-888 and you text G4D1 for Arts and Sciences. So we're going to introduce our first guest right now. This is Dean Nasser Momiezi, the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, who is back with us this year. Thank you. Talk to us, Dean, about what the Give for Dreams donations will fund this year. Yeah. The, one of our goals in the College of Arts and Science is that to transform the lives of our students. And one way to do that, provide our students the opportunity for innovative and high quality practical learning experience. And uh, there's perhaps no, other, no better way to accomplish this goal than the, our faculty involve our students in cutting edge research and travel to study abroad program. And our viewers' donation will help us to promote undergraduate research and help us to support the student travel to academic conferences where they can present their findings in national and international conferences. What a great opportunity for yes. students. Yes. Wow. Something else exciting that's going on in the College of Arts and Sciences this year, you all are expanding your degree programming. Yes. Talk to us about that. Yes, we are going to launch two new programs in the fall. One is the Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education, and another one is the Master of Public Administration. Oh, fantastic. And uh, you know, there is a teaching job in the state in all sectors on the rise, especially in elementary education. And the enrollment the elementary student in the Clayton County Public Schools and surrounding county public schools are demanding the new teachers, contributed demand for new teachers. So our newly approved program will emphasize the practical learning. By the time our students graduate, they will have completed the field research the field experience in variety of the classroom teaching and they will be well prepared to teach and since 2015 mm -hmm. over 90% of our graduates in the program teacher education program are teaching throughout the state of Georgia. Wow. That is yes. wonderful. Well, yes. I mean, that's just another way that Clayton State is making yes. a huge impact. Yes, and the public administration master is the, for those who are working in the public sector mm -hmm. or they are working already in the public sector and they want to enhance their careers. And this is the program for them. They can take public administration with concentration in criminal justice or a general public administration degree. Okay. But either way, this program will emphasize the public sector ethics and the leadership, the human resource management, program evaluation, and the budgeting and the finance. Good stuff. And this is really a good program for the people that they, they work in the non-public yeah, sector, now. in non-profit organizations. Exactly. So give us your plug. Why should people donate to support the College of Arts and Sciences today? The, the truth is, the, every graduate I speak with, they remember a professor or a class project that they made a difference or that was turning point in their college career. And also our viewers can make difference in the life of our student by contributing to the, the research fund and the travel fund. You know, most of our students are the first in their family to attend the college. And they come mostly from the low-income households and perhaps work 20, 30 hours a week. So this, the, the money that the, our viewers contribute will really help us to place some of these very talented, bright students in a selective research team with the faculty, which faculty will give very individualized attention. Great. And this will really help our students in the future. Wonderful. Well, thank Dean Mamiezi, thank you for your time this thank morning. Thank you. 
please remember several ways you can give online, in person, on the phone, on your phone, anything. So up next, we're gonna have another special guest with us who's going to talk about his chemistry research project. But first, we're actually gonna see a video that spotlights how the College of Arts and Sciences was able to support his work. So I've always been a very curious person. Uh, my first word was probably why. You can ask my mom for clarification on that though. And then my faith has really just shaped my curiosity just because I want to know more. I just, I don't ever want to stay where I am. I want to keep growing and keep learning more. And that applies to my faith and to chemistry. Science to me is so fascinating just because we're learning how the world works. You can look at something and say, this is happening because of, that's happening because of this. And just the idea that I can understand more, I love that idea. So the ACS conference in New Orleans was actually my first conference I attended, and it was nerve-wracking to be around so many great chemists and students and professors. But once I got in there, I realized it was such a friendly environment, and they were so welcoming, and I just felt at home being there presenting my research in front of them. So my research that I presented was based around, we were trying to do a study to see if we could attach small molecules onto a metal center. Part of my research, it can actually be used in real life for chemical sensing of impurities. Um, impurities are hard to detect now just because they're in such small quantities, but those small quantities can cause disastrous results. But having these chemical sensing and metal organic frameworks allow us to detect these impurities at lower levels and faster than we could before. First off, just to the people who donate, I want to say thank you because I couldn't have done this without you. To me, when I know that people are coming in and supporting us in what we're doing, it encourages me because I want to keep going. And I want to say it makes us not just want to be okay students, but we want to be great students because we see you believe in us and you want us to succeed and you're helping us succeed. So I just want to thank you again for that because without your donations, we wouldn't be where we are at now. because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. Visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dream. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Nice. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> That video really explained why the College of Arts and Sciences needs your support. Students are doing field research and need those funds to be able to complete projects that lead to discovery. Exactly. Let's welcome Tommy Sell to the show. How Hi. are you, Tommy? I'm doing really well, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Now, as a chemistry major, you had a chance to present at the American Chemical Society National Meeting. Yes. What did you present on and how did you and your fellow classmates prepare for the conference? So I presented some research I did with one of the professors here, uh, Dr. Myers. So our goal was to create a nanostructure called metal organic frameworks, which in a nutshell are metal sensors that are connected by organic bridges or ligands to each other. 
They can be used for sensing devices or even gas storage, for example. Wow. Okay. So we actually prepared for a few for about a year actually to get ready for this conference. We're in the lab doing research, writing up our papers, writing up our posters, and just actually doing the science to get to this point. Whole year, yeah. A whole year. It's a lot. What yeah. was the conference experience like and what did you actually learn by being there? The conference itself was fantastic. We were actually in New Orleans. It was ACS oh, 2018, mm -hmm. and it was beyond amazing. I was surrounded by some of the top chemists and scientists in the country, if not the world. Oh, wow. And just seeing them, seeing the research that's out there and is being done, it was absolutely beautiful. That's awesome. Sounds very fantastic. So, Tommy, I hear that when you graduate, you're actually <laughs> planning to pursue a career different from chemistry. Tell us about your career goals and how will you use your uh, chemistry education in your career? So I'm just doing a little hop over to physics, actually. I'm looking at hopefully doing solid state physics, which is kind of hard to explain, but one of my goals is to work with batteries eventually. Okay, okay. So the way my chem chemistry education has helped prepare me is we've learned the content, and that's part of what we've been taught here. The Clayton State does a great job of also teaching us how to think, how to approach these problems, and how to actually be a good scientist. So it goes a step beyond just the content and goes further into career development, personal development, yeah. to be a great scientist. That critical thinking piece. Exactly. So from chemistry to physics, physics to chemistry. I know. <laughs> Talk to us as a student, talk to us about what it means to you when someone gives to support you know, arts and sciences projects, things that are directly helping you. It makes me feel wonderful that someone believes in me enough to invest in me, right. believes in my fellow students, believes that we can actually do great things, and the fact that they're willing to give, the fact that they're willing to invest in my future and the future of the students here, it makes me feel wonderful. It makes me feel like we're actually accomplishing something and it's setting us up on the right trajectory and right path for the future. And that's what it takes, is just believing in our students and putting your money where your mouth is. That's what it takes. Yeah, he said he felt wonderful. He feels wonderful when we give to him. I feel wonderful giving. It's a win-win for everybody, Tommy. It is, it is. So, Tommy, thank you for being here to share your experience this morning. Um, quick update, College of Arts and Sciences. Let me refresh here really quickly. College of Arts and Sciences has raised, let's see, $280 so far. So now that you've heard Tommy and now that you've met Tommy, I think a lot of you folks from ANS are going to be inspired to give, um, help the College of Arts and Sciences reach their goal. Um, also, a couple of other updates for you. The Excellence Funds Project has reached its goal. Incredible. So that's fantastic. Um, student Affairs, Student Emergency Fund Project. I know that's your baby. <laughs> um, also made its goal. As of right now, yes. we are at $35,768. Wow. That's 24%. So we're gonna, we're gonna say, the math people are gonna hate this, but we're a, full, a quarter of the way there. A quarter of the way. We'll take Close it. enough. We'll, we'll take, take it. it. So thank you to everyone who has made a contribution so far. Every dollar amount makes a difference. It truly does. You are supporting students. And there's still time to help with any project, um, earning its extra $2,000 during our Lunchtime Incentive Challenge, yes. sponsored by the CSU Foundation. Will it be College of Arts and Sciences? We'll see. We'll have to see. After the break, we'll talk to the Alumni Association. Yes. Stick around. So I've always been a very curious person. Uh, my first word was probably why. You can ask my mom for clarification on that though. And then my faith has really just shaped my curiosity just because I want to know more. I, just, I don't ever want to stay where I am. I want to keep growing and keep learning more. And that applies to my faith and to chemistry. Science to me is so fascinating just because we're learning how the world works. You can look at something and say, this is happening because of, that's happening because of this. And just the idea that I can understand more, I love that idea. So the ACS conference in New Orleans was actually my first conference I attended, and it was nerve-wracking to be around so many great chemists and students and professors. But once I got in there, I realized it was such a friendly environment, and they were so welcoming, and I just felt at home being there presenting my research in front of them. 
So my research that I presented was based around, we were trying to do a study to see if we could attach small molecules onto a metal center. Part of my research, it can actually be used in real life for chemical sensing of impurities. Um, impurities are hard to detect now just because they're in such small quantities, and those small quantities can cause disastrous results. But having these chemical sensing and metal organic frameworks allow us to detect these impurities at lower levels and faster than we could before. First off, just to the people who donate, I want to say thank you because I couldn't have done this without you. To me, when I know that people are coming in and supporting us and what we're doing, it encourages me because I want to keep going. And I want to say it makes us not just want to be okay students, but we want to be great students because we see you believe in us and you want us to succeed and you're helping us succeed. So I just want to thank you again for that because without your donations, we wouldn't be where we are at now. because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. Visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dream. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Neat. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> Uh, hello. When you need to talk to your people, you talk there. Hey there, we are back. <laughs> they caught us. They caught us having fun. We have so much fun and, up here. Yeah. We can't even hide it. So. We can't. So you guys should come and check it out and come hang out with us. I actually mm -hmm. just ran into a friend of mine who um, we work together at the hospital, and he's here just taking a couple of classes. You know, awesome. just, just a couple of chemistry and physics classes. Future just, alum. Um, Future alum. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, so speaking of alum, we are talking about the Alumni Association. Um, you know, after a student graduates, their relationship with the university doesn't end. We're proof. Yes, okay, we proud alums. Proud. Okay, right there, you see it. Um, you know, I graduated from the College of Health. College of Business. Exactly. So we're going to talk a little bit more right now about the Alumni Association and some of the awesome things that are going on to keep us connected to the university That's long right. after we get that degree. After our class is done and we've graduated, there is still support that needs to be given to us yes. Clayton State alums. So yes. let's welcome Michael Little, Director of Alumni Engagement and Alumni Giving. Hi, Michael. Hey, how are y'all doing? Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. So Michael, the Alumni Association has continued to grow and reach out to Clayton State's alumni base over the past year. Tell us what's been your goals for the Alumni Association. Sure, so number one, ultimately we want to continue to engage as many alumni as we can. We want to continue to increase pride from our alumni in their alma mater. Um, and so the way that we do that, obviously we have a lot of social events. We just came off of homecoming. Whoa, whoa, that, was that was fun. So much fun. Oh my gosh, we had Yes, a and we have other big events like Alumni Weekend. And of course we have a major role in commencement and graduation for those new graduates. We have uh, after hour social events throughout the year. We have one Tonight. this evening yes. at No Mas Cantina. So alumni, if you're listening, make sure you show up six o'clock to eight o'clock. Uh, we also had a Braves game this past summer. We're gonna be doing that again. That was a lot of fun. Had about 
50 or 60 alumni out at that. But we also want to do some other things um, with the Alumni Association to kind of generate pride and have a major impact. Ultimately, you know, we have over 25,000 alumni in the Alumni Association, and almost 20,000 of those live right here in the Atlanta metro area. So as an organized group, we really have the opportunity to make a, a generational even impact on this sure. area, I especially agree. South Atlanta. So trying to take the opportunity to develop a mentoring program for our current students. Mm -hmm. We have over 120 alumni that have registered in our mentoring our current students right now Obviously, we want to um, have an impact through philanthropy. We have the um, uh, Alumni Association Dream Maker Scholarship, mm -hmm. where we've already raised over $3,000 for that, and as well as um, having our alumni giving to the fund of their choice, especially on days like Give for Dreams. Yes. And of course, we also want to kind of in, uh, showcase our pride in our um, in our community through community service and volunteerism. I want to give a special shout out to one of our alumni board members, Xavier Smith, who has done a, yes. a tremendous job sure in starting to put together a program that will really engage our alumni through community service and volunteerism and ultimately we also want to reach out to our students um, our, our current students because they are our future alumni That's right. and, and yeah. so we have programs like senior class gift where uh, current students can give back um, to their alma or their future alma mater their mm -hmm. Clayton State and then we also have you know um, senior crossing and toast where alumni can come back and kind of welcome those um, students mm -hmm. uh, into the Alumni Association through a ceremonial crossing from studenthood to alumni so we have a lot of opportunities, and, and Claire, I want to give you a special shout out for being part of our alumni board. Um, our alumni board is fantastic. Mm -hmm. We also have a great new a great young alumni group. council that is doing a lot of things to help yeah. um, get us to that point and get us to that uh, point of a lot of alumni being engaged. And in the last year, Michael, you and Royal have actually started a new podcast. This is super cool, the Laker Lounge. It's how is that helping to spread the Clayton State message even more? Yeah, it's been super fun. Royal and I have a blast. Once a month, yeah. we have the Laker Lounge podcast. You can download that through iTunes as well as you can listen to it online. We just have a bunch of phenomenal guests that are talking about subjects that are relevant both in the world and in our community, as well as, of course, to, uh, with Clayton State. You know, we've had um, our director of Veterans Resource uh, Center um, to talk about veterans issues during Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. um, we've also had um, one of our professors here on campus to talk about some research he's been doing in uh, with HBCUs and the impact that they've made during Black History Month. So we try to stay relevant, but we also like to have a lot of fun as well. Yeah, we do. So Absolutely. you should definitely tune in. I can yes. tell you, as an alumna and even as a co-host of the podcast, um, even being a member of the Clayton State community, you don't realize how much is really happening until you have yes. opportunities like this to sit down that with like so Dr. True. Favors so and so many others. And so for my alumni out there, you want to tune in. This podcast is awesome. We're <laughs> awesome. And we're doing awesome things at Clayton State. Absolutely. I mean, we have alumni, we have faculty, we have staff. We even have students that come onto the podcast. There's a lot of different perspectives that um, can, can be provided through the podcast. Mm -hmm. So right. tune in. Right. So, Michael, I've already given, shameless plug, part of my giving was to the Alumni Association. Thank you so much. But I want you mm -hmm. to tell the viewers, especially our alumni out there, why they should be given to the Alumni Association. Yeah, absolutely. So the Alumni Association is here for our, our alumni. Um, as I mentioned, if we are organized and we um, come together as alumni, we really can have a major impact. And, and we want to um, have great programming. We want to be meaningful. We want to be relevant to our alumni. But to have those opportunities like mentorship and homecoming and after our socials, those, those take money. We need, uh, we need those donations. So alumni, if you are listening out there, we really want to make sure that um, we, we continue to be able to have those programs. We continue to be able to have those opportunities. So donate today. Mm -hmm. All right, Michael, thank you for talking with us about the Alumni Association. We will see you tonight at NOMOS. Yes, thank we you will. so much. Um, so you can give to the Alumni Association today. Go online and select the Alumni Association or the Senior Class Gift. Um, the Alumni Association, as of right now, has raised $1,140. All right. Yeah, you see it right there on your screen. And if you would like to text to give, yes, you can text G4D5 for the Alumni Association. You text that to 555-888. So that's how you give to the Alumni Association. We want you to give. Absolutely. We want you to give, absolutely. We're alumni, we're telling you. Yes, give. we are. Give, give, give. And remember, the project with the most number of unique donors until noon wins the extra $2,000. All right, so stick around when we come back. We are gonna get down to business. College of Business.
strong, Tatiana. Gosh, Omar, today's gift for dreams. I really want to help, but I just don't know how to give. Gee whiz, that is a problem. But you're in luck because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. Go online and visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Nice. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs>welcome back to give for dreams clayton state university's annual day of giving it's time to get down to business yes it is. we're going to talk business in this half hour before we get to that we just want to remind you that you have several ways to give to clayton state university today um, we are in our second incentive challenge this yep. is our lunchtime incentive so the project with the greatest number of unique donors between now and noon, so you've got 30 more minutes just about to get it in, um, will receive an additional $2,000 from Two, the foundation $2, board. $2,000. Mm -hmm. $2, yes, 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 yes. Um, we um, are going to talk about the College of Business, um, supply chain, human resources. The College of Business has really positioned itself as a leader in the business the academic business community. You yep. know, I, I hear little snippets here and there in, in the news, and I always hear Clayton State University when there are business school rankings and this and that about business school. So we're going right. to spend a little time talking today about what makes the College of Business such a standout yep. on our campus and how it has positioned itself to be so competitive and so attractive. Absolutely. College of Business is near and dear to my heart. Yes, it is. I yep. am a product of College of Business, so help me uh, welcome our guest today. We have Dr. Jacob Chaco, who's the Dean of College of Business, and Dr. Jesse Zinn, Assistant Professor of Economics. Thank you all for being here. Thank, Thank you. Us. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. So Dean Chaco, tell us what Gear for Dreams donations will fund for the College of Business. Well, thank you so much for having us. Um, I can tell you in its entirety, every cent will go to support our student activities. Um, we try and do as much as possible co-curricular activities to develop our students uh, for careers. So we send them for competitions, Sam Case competition. The students you're going to talk to went to the negotiation competition. We also sponsor a lot of student conferences like SHRM as well as accounting club. Yeah. We, um, we bring in speakers for the students. So actually this year, we have spent over. We have been able to spend over ten thousand dollars in sponsoring student activities. So That's incredible. Places. So, believe me, everything we get today, we raise today, is for our students, and they're worth it. Yes, they are. It makes such a difference. It for is. Them. It it's does. Just wonderful. Well, the College of Business is also busy expanding its program offerings. There's now the online MBA that launched last spring, the MBA digital marketing concentration in the fall. Talk to us about your goals for making the College of Business a real leader among business schools in Metro Atlanta. Okay, um, I, I, if you don't mind, I'll take it. Um, yes, the online MBA has been a tremendous success. Um, 
within less than one year, we already have about 45% of all MBA students in the online version. So, so the growth of the MBA program over the last year has been over 25%. We wow. added about 200 students in the MBA program. So wow. it's been a tremendous success. Uh, in addition to that, we're very proud of what we are doing at the undergraduate level. You know, our goal and our mission of the university and the College of Business is to make sure that our students are career ready when they graduate. So we, uh, has, we have built and implemented what we call the career spine within the undergraduate curriculum. And as part of the career spine, students are required to be to go for pitching competition, mock interviews, resume workshops, etc. And you know, a proud uh, uh, alums such as Royal has been involved in mentoring our students. So we're trying to get corporate, our career center, our alums all involved in helping students become better in their uh, in their career readiness. In addition, uh, digital marketing would be a great is a great addition. Uh, we believe that that'll make both the MBA and the BBA very really attractive. Yes. And uh, one last thing, we are adding two more graduate programs. Well, it's still in the proposal stage. One is in supply chain analytics, and the other one is in uh, strategic leadership development. So, um, so we're growing. We've been busy, and with yes. wonderful faculty such as Jesse. By the way, I just want to state this: you said assistant. He has been promoted to associate. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. Well, congratulations, congratulations. to that. Um, and, and speaking on supporting the College of Business. Dr. Zinn, tell us why is it important for us to give and support the College of Business on Get for Dreams today? Well, like Dean Chaka was just telling you guys, uh, every cent that, that we get, we're going to spend it on the students, right? So they're going to be able to uh, go to more competitions, do more study abroad, and do these kinds of extracurricular outside of the class activities that will help supplement the in-class activities and in-class learning they do to prepare them for their careers and their lives after college. Right? So uh, it's, it's just, I mean, what, what else, what, what better can you invest in than helping our students, our students right? grow yeah. and, and, and be the most that they can be? That's They're right. who it's all about. Listen, they I, are. I just said I'm a proud of, and yeah. I don't know if you know me like that, but I'm pretty great. And <laughs> part of that is in uh, <laughs> gratitude towards the College of Business. So we're glad to yes. have had Dean Chaco Thank and Dr. You. Zinn here to explain the need for funding to support student and faculty engagement yeah. opportunities offered by the College of Business. Thank you both so much. Thank for you so here. much. Now to support the College of Business and the business students, you can call, you can go online, or you can text G4D2, this is code 2, G4D2 to 555-888 and you will get a form specifically for the College of Business. Check out this video that explains the impact the College of Business has had on student success. SHRM stands for Society for Human Resource Management. And the SHRM is all about empowering our student body to go out and be the best they can be. Clayton State SHRM chapter has had success within the past several years because of the, net, the, the opportunity to be able to network with human resources professionals in the community. We partner up with SHRM Atlanta as well as um, we've done things with Intra HR. So of course, you know, that gives us the opportunity to be able to build the students and allow them to network with HR professionals when it comes down to HR knowledge and best business practices. So yes, I participated in the Society for HR Management, or also known as, more widely known as SHRM, case competition back in 2016. Uh, we placed second as the topics was focused on talent development. So my experience during the case competition was absolutely amazing, but at the same time frightening, uh, knowing that there were a bunch of HR practitioners out there that were essentially going to judge us. Um, but separately, being able to see all the different universities from all over the United States coming to this one conference, this one case competition, um, and seeing them practice and knowing that we're going to go up against them was tough, but it was also very rewarding. So being able to participate in case competitions um, by our generous donors, whether it's within the local community, uh, we, I wouldn't have been able to experience this uh, without their support. And so having any type of donations, whether it's a penny or anything, 
goes an extremely long way for students to be able to develop their skills and just learn how to how the how the outside work works. Mm -hmm. What a great opportunity offered to students yes. in the College of Business participating in competitions. Let's meet yes. a few students who took part in a national mediation competition uh, representing Clayton State. That's so cool. So yep. cool. Brianna Bynes Hi. and Alexis Martinez are here with us this morning. Thanks, ladies. They are in the home stretch until graduation. One of the great opportunities that the College of Business provides is to participate in competitions. So the one that you all were in, it's the INADR, is what they're telling me, um, International Intercollegiate Mediation Tournament. Talk to us about that experience. Um, the experience was wonderful. Um, we prepared for weeks practicing, learning different mediation styles. Um, we competed against several schools, not only from across the United States, but in different countries as well. Wow. So we had the opportunity to network and meet people from all over. Yeah, it really was a great experience, something that I had never really done before. It helped me get out of my comfort zone a little bit to be on the team, and it was great to meet all the students that were involved. And it had a global scope. That's amazing. The teams all the way across the world. Well, we know you all did fantastic <laughs> yes, representing Clayton State. They really the did. team actually made it to the semifinals, and you won awards. Yeah, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Tell you. us what awards you won, um, and what was it like to compete um, and be successful among other national and international schools? Okay, so there were actually two categories. There was the mediation category and there was the client advocate category. Alexis and I took fourth place out of 28 teams in the client and advocate category. Wow, Yay. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We were just um, kind of blown away. You never know what to expect. Everyone was great, so you don't know, but um, with our hard work and with the training of Professor Ogden, we did, we did great. You, you really did, you Thank really you. did. So donations to the College of Business help to support projects like going to this mediation conference. Talk to us and talk to our viewers about why people should give today. Well, the College of Business really is a, is a special place for students and it helps them grow. So you know that your donations are going to something meaningful. We would have, I would have never been able to make the trek to Iowa had it not been for the gracious donations from people all around giving back to the school. And just by down by donating, it just says that you believe in us, and that's motivation right there to know that people believe in us enough to mm -hmm. give towards our dreams. Yes, that is the theme. All of the it students really that we have is. had up here have all said the same thing: how wonderful it feels to know that we believe in them, and yes. that's what it's about. It is. It that's is it's about. because it's it's a tough world out there, and to know that somebody really truly thinks you can do it, and we do. And we believe in you. Yes. Your Clayton State community does. That's why we're giving today. Yes, so thank you, are. ladies, for spending some time with us to talk about your success at the National Mediation uh, Competition. And again, congratulations on your thank great you. awards. Yes. Thank you. Great job, ladies. All right, so you ready for an update? Let's do an update. Right. Um, according to my laptop up here, $59,575, oh, wow. which is 40% of the way to goal. We are trucking along. Yes. Yeah, so a huge thank you to those of you who have donated so far. I'm going to scroll down while we're not looking at my screen. I don't know. We're going to look at it anyway. I was trying to see how College of Business was doing. There we are. $3,815. Sounds good to wow. me. So y'all's business peeps are stepping up. That's wonderful. We need wonderful. you to keep stepping up. We have a goal. We need to continue to support these lovely students yes. right here. Yes, So thanks do. again, ladies. Let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll hear from Spivey Hall. SHRM stands for Society for Human Resource Management. And the SHRM is all about empowering our student body to go out and be the best they can be. Clayton State SHRM chapter has had success within the past several years because of the, net, the opportunity to be able to network with human resources professionals in the community. We partner up with SHRM Atlanta as well as um, we've done things with Intrapo HR. So of course, you know, that gives us the opportunity to be able to build the students and allow them to network with HR professionals when it comes down to HR knowledge and best business practices. So yes, I participated in the Society for HR Management, or also known as, more widely known as SHRM, case competition back in 2016. Uh, we placed second 
as the topics was focused on talent development. So my experience during the case competition was absolutely amazing, but at the same time frightening, uh, knowing that there were a bunch of HR practitioners out there that were essentially going to judge us. Um, but separately, being able to see all the different universities from all over the United States come in to this one conference, this one case competition, um, and seeing them practice and knowing that we're going to go up against them was tough, but it was also very rewarding. So being able to participate in case competitions um, by our generous donors, whether it's within the local community, uh, we, I wouldn't have been able to experience this uh, without their support. And so having any type of donations, whether it's a penny or anything, goes an extremely long way for students to be able to develop their skills and just learn how to how the, how the outside work works. Mm -hmm. Wrong top of your Gosh, Omar, today is Give for Dreams. I really want to help, but I just don't know how to give. Gee whiz, that is a problem. But you're in luck because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678 466 4470. You can text to give. Make sure. You know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. Go online and visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> Welcome back to Give for Dreams, everyone. We are so glad you're here with us this morning, about to be afternoon. We're gonna talk about Spivey Hall, this, um, this chunk of time here, one of the gems on Clayton State's campus. I have a, a new partner in crime with me here for a little while. This is Elise Royston. You are the brand new interim development specialist. Yes, okay. I am. Awesome. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited to be here and talk a little bit about Spivey House Project for this year's Gift for Dreams. Wonderful. So tell us a little bit about you. How did, how did you become connected with Spivey Hall? Well, I have been at Spivey Hall on and off for the last seven or eight years mm -hmm. and uh, I just sort of stepped into this position as we needed it. Wonderful, so. wonderful. We're excited to see what you do in this position and we are also excited to hear about things that are happening at yes. Spivey Hall. We have another guest with us this morning to talk I a do. little bit about that. Um, remember though, if you would like to give, we always have to remind people, here's how you give. Um, if you would like to um, text your donation, G4D11. 
1-800-255-5888 for Spivey Hall, okay? Um, we're gonna talk about all kinds of cool things that Spivey Hall has going on today with our next guest. This is Melanie Darby, the Education Manager. Hello. Hello and welcome. So first thing, tell us about the project that Give for Dreams will fund this year. Well, I'm the Education Manager for Spivey Hall and uh, we host a series of concerts called Young People's Concerts where we bring 10 to 12,000 pre-K to 12th grade wow. students to this campus every year. Um, for some, it's their first live arts experience. For others, it's their first trip to a college campus. We, ho we show them opera, world music, classical music, jazz, everything. And so what we're asking our friends here to do is help us fund a field trip. A lot of these schools are Title I, which means that the majority of the students in the school are on free or reduced lunch. So even the $3 ticket, which is all we charge for these concerts, is very little. It's still a barrier to many of these kids. So if you fund a field trip, for $300, you can bring in a bus of 50 kids to wow. Spivey Hall and Clayton State University. So we try to provide as many ticket and transportation subsidies as we can, and we're hoping that this fundraiser will help us bring in even more. Wow. Thank you, Melanie. So tell us a little bit about some projects that are going on. I know last year you had some students come in and they got to watch Drew Ford perform and ask him some questions. Yes, they did. Uh, Drew Ford, who's also known as That Viola Kid or TVK, is actually from this area. He grew up in Stockbridge and uh, in the Atlanta area, then went on to Juilliard and off to California right now. He is an inspiration. He's young, he's passionate, and he is a phenomenal viola player. Uh, he's so incredibly engaging as he was at our concert last year and he'll be back in the coming season. Um, he's able to connect with urban students and meet them where they are because he loves hip hop and rap and he's got an online present. He's won, won online awards, as a matter of fact, for his website. Okay. But he takes them on a fantastic journey into classical music. He helps them connect the music they love to this new music for them. And he's actually sort of inspires them to find a new possibility and new dreams in music. He is the epitome of the a first class young people's concert artist. Wonderful. So today is Gift for Dreams, of course. That's why we're all here with this big production going on. Talk to us, kind of kind of bring it home for the viewers and for anybody who's thinking about giving right now. Why should they give to support Spivey Hall's Fund a Field Trip? Well, the mission of Spivey Hall Education is to help kids learn through music, music and expand their worldview. So we do all we can to keep our prices low with only a $3 ticket. But when you donate to fund a field trip, you are lowering the barriers that were, and eliminating those barriers between the children and the arts and a new world experience. Um, you're expanding their worldview. You're expanding their dreams. Uh, you know, uh, the amount we're asking for would fund 15 buses and nearly a thousand students to come to this campus. Wow! Wow! That's a huge impact. It is a it huge really impact. Is. So it thank is. you so much, Melanie, for sharing a little bit about this community-based project and Spivey Hall Education and why everyone should donate to our project. So I think we have a video next. Yes, so sure if do. we want to watch a video, take a look at our Fund a Field Trip uh, project that we have going on and see why you should donate. Yes. It's important to connect people, especially young people, to music at an early age. I think programs like this are incredibly important. And if you're thinking about donating to fund a field trip or giving money towards the arts, you're not only helping the younger generation understand what it, what it means to be expressive and to express themselves in constructive, creative ways, but you're also creating the next generation of musicians and lovers of art. Because you have to understand that schools do not have the funding necessary. Parents in the communities do not have the funding that is necessary for these scholars to go out and see a world-class performance. And it's our duty as the educator to put those experiences in front of our scholars. I bring my kids every year and I will continue to bring my kids to these performances every year. 
I have come here for many years. I remember coming here in elementary school, just like many of the kids who are here tonight. One thing that he taught me was just to think about how music makes you feel and how, what to take from it, and I will take that and use it when I'm playing or singing. To be passionate about the music that you're learning and playing. We need to create more inviting environments for younger audiences. I think it's so important to cultivate young minds and show them the importance of the art because art influences every aspect of life. What's wrong, Tatiana? Gosh, Omar, today's gift for dreams. I really want to help, but I just don't know how to give. Gee whiz, that is a problem. But you're in luck, because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. Go online and visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Nice. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs>that video very much captures the essence of why Spivey Hall is so important to cultivating music for um, for students across yep. and, and we have a lot of partnerships and here with us we have Monica Wiley also to talk about those partnerships with Spivey Hall and why that's so important as well. Yeah, Monica you're with Clayton County Public Schools yes and you you know firsthand. Talk to us about the partnership between Clayton County Public Schools and Spivey Hall and how that helps students in the district. Well, our students, um, we really value the arts in Clayton County Public Schools. And what we noticed, uh, Melanie and I, what we noticed was that our students didn't take advantage of Spivey Hall and all of the wonderful activities that go on here, right here in our back door. So with the sponsorships and the fundraising that occurs here at Clayton State University, our students are actually able to come and see operas that they normally can't experience or see jazz artists that they normally can't experience. Um, at the cost of the lovely donors that you have here right in our back door. Mm -hmm. So our students really value what Spivey Hall could offer us. And Fund a Field Trip, it not only allows students to experience classical music and other genres like you're talking about, but it gives them an opportunity to experience a truly unique venue. Um, why is it important? Um, why is all of that important in, in developing students' appreciation of the arts? Because we value in our school system learning beyond the walls. We can stand in a classroom all day long and say this is how it looks when you're there. This is how you behave when you're there. This is the etiquette, this is the protocol. But once the students get into the venue and they see the beautiful organ, they see or hear the acoustics in the facility, then they become a little more passionate, a little more excited about their opportunities to perhaps perform at a different level. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Sounds good. Well, Monica, why do you think that people should give today? People should give today if they value developing and nurturing a community and understanding that arts, without arts, we really do not have a community because we need creative thinkers, we need, we need artists, we need musicians, we need vocalists, we need all of those in order to flourish as a community and we need those in order for our students to become productive citizens. Monica, thank you for taking the time to be here with us and, and just to help us all understand more how the experience at Spivey Hall really can impact the lives of so many kids Absolutely. in our community right here. I mean, stories like those, that's what makes Spivey Hall even more special yes. than it already is and, yes. and why we are looking for your gifts for Spivey Hall today. Okay, we, we brought Elise out and said, yeah, you're gonna drum up the business, right? That's what we're here Hall. for. Absolutely. So. Um, right now, Spivey Hall's raised almost $2,200. Yes. Very so excited. We're getting so there. Yes, go. absolutely. So remember, there's still plenty of time to give if you haven't already. Um, call, go online, text, come visit us here in the UC, yes. however you want to yeah. give your money. Uh, we just really want to encourage everyone to donate to make those dreams real. Absolutely. Yeah. When we come back, we are going to take a leap across the pond or down south. We're going to talk about study abroad. It's important to connect people, especially young people, to music at an early age. I think programs like this are incredibly important. And if you're thinking about donating to fund a field trip, giving money towards the arts, you're not only helping the younger generation understand what it, what it means to be expressive and to express themselves in constructive, creative ways, but you're also creating the next generation of musicians and lovers of art. because you have to understand that schools do not have the funding necessary. Parents in the communities do not have the funding that is necessary for these scholars to go out and see a world-class performance. And it's our duty as the educator to put those experiences in front of our scholars. I bring my kids every year and I will continue to bring my kids to these performances every year. I have come here for many years. I remember coming here in elementary school, just like many of the kids who are here tonight. One thing that he taught me was just to think about how music makes you feel and how, what to take from it, and I will take that and use it when I'm playing or singing. To be passionate about the music that you're learning and playing. We need to create more inviting environments for younger audiences. I think it's so important to cultivate young minds and show them the importance of the art because art influences every aspect of life. because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. Visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs>
Welcome back to Give for Dreams, Clayton State University's annual day of giving. We are so excited everyone's here today. We've got a donation update to share. Okay. All right, you want to give them the number? Sure. So far, we have raised $60,296 this morning. Woohoo! That is 40% of our goal. 40%. 40%. Which means really we're practically halfway there. Of right? course, absolutely. Okay. I don't do the math. So that means though that we've still got 60% of our goal left. All right. Which means that we need everybody out there to make sure and make your donation to Give for Dreams. We're going to um, showcase now one of the other projects where people can donate and something that is just a really cool experience, study abroad. It's one of those experiences that many students on campus actually take part in. We've heard from actually some study abroad students already this morning and it gives them a chance to visit a foreign country, learn about its culture, learn have really a unique experiential learning experience. Um, our study abroad program has actually sent hundreds of students to destinations like India, South Korea, Mexico, Bahamas. I mean, it's all over the map, all over the map. Sounds like a fantastic program. Yes. And we have someone here to talk to us about it today. I am here with Sasha Choka Slu. Um, she's going to talk a little bit about the program and the kind of experiences that our students are receiving from us. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Um, we have so many wonderful opportunities for students, and I'm so excited to be here to talk about it. So tell us how you are bringing awareness to study abroad. Yes, we actually just started a new marketing campaign this past year where we worked uh, with the library on a display and uh, just a marketing campaign to encompass the entire uh, campus from going out with working to with the orientation division, uh, introducing the new incoming students about study abroad, working with uh, the TV monitors on campus, introducing it that way, and revamping all of the programs, marketing material. And by doing all of these new changes that we've encompassed, we've um, almost raised our numbers by 50% this year, which has been really great for us. Wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you. How does study abroad enhance a student's education? That's a great question. There's so many wonderful, uh, um, awesome things that come about from study abroad for students. And some of those are where we have um, studies that have shown across the nation how it's valuable for the job market and also it's um, going to improve students' GPA and help them graduate as well as students who have studied abroad are more likely to um, get a job over those who have not studied abroad. Interesting. Wonderful. Yeah. So you want to take the next one? Sure. Um, so there's some very exciting study abroad trips coming up this spring. And um, tell us a little bit about those. Where sure. are students planning to go? Yeah, we actually just had two uh, that came back from their spring break programs. We had business in Jamaica, which was really awesome. Those students uh, did a wonderful service learning project where they uh, raised over 270 books to donate to a primary school there in Jamaica and they went and they got to read those books to the students there um, and their goal was 200 but they raised more than that and they paid for the shipping and everything um, and then we also had a program that did history in Italy and then we have a couple of others coming up this May which is uh, business in Hungary and the Czech Republic, biology in Costa Rica, psychology in Guyana and teacher education in France and so just a lot of great programs that are coming up and I can't wait to see what the students are going to be doing. Wow, those are amazing opportunities. They are. Why? This is this is plug time. We, we're letting <laughs> everyone have their time to plug their program. Why do you think people should support study abroad through Give for Dreams? Study abroad is such an integral part of a student's education. It's going to allow them to learn across, uh, out of the classroom, across borders, and allow them to become a global citizen. Things that they normally wouldn't get if they're sitting in the classroom and you know just you know looking at the book. You know now we're going to take you outside and we're going to take you you know go to the Roman Colosseum instead of learning that through a textbook. Um, but also this is allowing donors to enhance students' educations and giving them a global perspective. And that's something that employers want uh, employers want to see nowadays. You know, they want to see that you have that global knowledge and experience. And I think that's a really life-changing opportunity for the donors as well as for the students. So definitely give and support our <laughs> students for study abroad. Awesome. Thank you for taking the time to be here, Sasha. Thank you. Thank you so much. It. I appreciate it. And so we need to recap for everybody. Lots of ways to give. There are lots of ways lots to of give. Lots of ways to give. So you can go on the phone, 678-466-4470. 
You can text, um, let's see, their text code for study abroad is, I can't read it from there because the, the monitor is way too far away. So make, you can always text 555-888, come see us in the University Center. Um, and then, of course, it's also really cool joining the conversation on social media. Absolutely. Um, because you've got a chance to just help raise the awareness. Yes. You know, and help you know, get the word out for everybody that, hey, this is going on. This is. is This is the day to do it. This is the day. Today's to, the day. Share it for us and pass it along and help yes, us raise some more money. Definitely. At least it's been fun having you yes, here with thank you. me. So we'll give one more plug for Spivey Hall. Yes, for you Spivey guys. Hall as well. We would love if you would give to Spivey Hall as well as study abroad trip. Yes, <laughs> yes. Thank, thank you so much for having me. Yes. So we're going to head to a break. We're going to switch things up a little bit. When we come back, Royal's going to be back. And a very familiar and favorite face on our campus, Jessica Sharman's going to be here too to take over some hosting duties. And we're going to talk about getting into school in the first place. So stick Perfect. around. It's important to connect people, especially young people, to music at an early age. I think programs like this are incredibly important. And if you're thinking about donating to fund a field trip or giving money towards the arts, you're not only helping the younger generation understand what it, what it means to be expressive and to express themselves in constructive, creative ways, but you're also creating the next generation of musicians and lovers of art. Because you have to understand that schools do not have the funding necessary. Parents in the communities do not have the funding that is necessary for these scholars to go out and see a world-class performance. And it's our duty as the educator to put those experiences in front of our scholars. I bring my kids every year and I will continue to bring my kids to these performances every year. I have come here for many years. I remember coming here in elementary school, just like many of the kids who are here tonight. One thing that he taught me was just to think about how music makes you feel and how, what to take from it and I will take that and use it when I'm playing or singing to be passionate about the music that you're learning and playing. We need to create more inviting environments for younger audiences. I think it's so important to cultivate young minds and show them the importance of the art because art influences every aspect of life. Because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. and visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dream. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Neat, it really is that 
Yeah. And remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m. So you got plenty of time. <laughs> Alright, so the first step toward helping students make their dreams real here at Clayton State University is to get them admitted. Here with us today is Stephen Jenkins, Executive Director of Recruitment and Admissions, to talk to us about his department's efforts to ensure students have a smooth transition to college. Welcome, Stephen. Hi, Thank Stephen. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So first up, Stephen, why has admissions made it a priority recently to expand access to students who want to attend Clayton State? Well, first of all, I'll say that uh, as, as uh, alumni, I know Jessica and Roy, you both know that Clayton State is an academic and rigorous institution. Yes. And so when I got here nearly five years ago and assumed the role, this role, I realized that we were denied about 40% of our students based 40. on about 40% wow. based on their GPA and income and test scores that just didn't meet our minimum requirements. But I also looked at uh, looked a little further into that data, and students were being denied here, but they were going on and being successful at other institutions. Mm. And so I, of course, saw, uh, raised that issue with our university leadership, and they, as I did, thought that was a, a, an issue. Mm -hmm. And we, we we put our heads together and figured out ways we can be somewhat supportive for students and be more inclusive and not exclusive. Right. Absolutely. And so doing that process, we were able to develop some alternative admissions programs that will allow students to come in through like a summer bridge program, and we have a transfer opportunity program that we develop to be able to support students and help students be successful while they're here. And both initiatives have been tremendously successful and students have, in both of those programs are either performing on par with other students or even sometimes outperforming them in terms of GPA and wow. retention. So That's it's a great brilliant. opportunity. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. So Stephen, your office has specifically worked over the last year to build those partnerships in the community to provide scholarship and grant funding yes. for students who want to attend Clayton State. Can you tell us about some of those efforts? Absolutely. So I'll say that I say this: uh, our foundation uh, department and our grant writers do a phenomenal job of uh, finding resources. Um, I think my job is pretty easy. I just need to find the students that need to benefit from them. <laughs> and so, uh, part of our efforts have been just connecting the, the right students with the right uh, dollars that are allocated for those students. Um, for example, the Coca-Cola scholarship. Uh, that, yeah. we, that we've had the last couple of years is able to support first generation college students mm -hmm. and women in STEM majors. Uh, the, as you guys mentioned earlier on, on your broadcast, that MailChimp, a very, very generous donation for students that are studying computers and information mathematical sciences. Mm -hmm. uh, AT&T gave uh, a, a sizable donation for students that were uh, wanting to start, freshman students that wanted to start early in college and give nice. them a leg, uh, leg up. And so those are just a few of the many, many donors that we've had that supported these efforts and our students, and they've made a tremendous difference. Fantastic. Yep. So speaking of scholarships, Give yep. for Dreams helps raise money for scholarships. How do these gifts supporting scholarships help students seeking to enroll in Clayton State? Yeah. So you guys know that Clayton State, uh, we serve overall a, a lower socioeconomic student. And so the, the funds that we raise in efforts like this help support and offset tuition costs, money for housing and meal plan, and they overall just support the uh, successful initiatives for students to start here, be retained, and ultimately graduate. And so the funds that we raise in this initiative and others uh, go a tremendous way of adding value to the lives of our students and mm -hmm. ultimately getting them and helping them to make their dreams reality. Absolutely. Yep. And I speak from sort of personal experience there. A scholarship is what helped me attend Clayton State, so yes. it really does make a difference. Yes. Thank you, Stephen, for joining us to talk about the work Admissions is doing to welcome the next generation of the Laker family to campus. If you haven't given yet, we hope that you will. No amount is too small. Every little bit really makes a difference. Up next, we'll be talking about my favorite, athletics.
basketball is just, it affects like everything in me. So like, if I'm not doing good in basketball, then I'm not doing good just in general. So the passion is very strong. Uh, the biggest thing that drives me to achieve success in my studies is probably my mom. Like, she's very strict on me. Obviously, if I get a B, it's still okay, but for her, she has very high standards, and I keep myself to that as well. I just always think about someone else out there is doing something as well. So someone else out there is making just as many shots as you, or someone else out there is working on making layups or doing something else. So it's like, what, what are you doing on your part? Career goals for the future, I like in the long run, I want to become a Division I coach. Uh, that's always been my dream. If I'm not playing, I want to do something to help out other little kids. I feel like to be a champion, you have to you don't have to, but you, I feel like you have to be able to achieve certain goals and like still be kind of like a leader on the court and off the court. Champions, they, they, they do win, but also too, you have to keep like a positive mentality. Uh, when someone gives to support my dreams, it just, it makes me feel real good. Like it just shows that someone else cares. Wrong top Gosh, Omar, today's gift for dreams. I really want to help, but I just don't know how to give. Gee whiz, that is a problem. But you're in luck because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678 466 4470. You can text to give. Make sure. You know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. Go online and visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Yes. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to this very special hour of Give for Dreams, Clayton State's Day of Giving. First, let's introduce Lee, formally introduce ourselves. I'm Jessica Charman, an alumni of Clayton State and a student athlete, and this is my wonderful co-host, Royal. And we've got a very exciting hour ahead with athletics. Yes, we do, Jessica. This is going to be a fun hour. Athletics is seeking your gifts to fund athletic equipment so student athletes can perform well in their sport. To support athletics via your mobile phone, you can text G4D6 to 555-888. You can also go online, you can call, or you can come visit Jessica and I right here in the James and Baker that. University Center. So joining us now for this hour is the new director of athletics here at Clayton State, Mr. Ryan Erlacher. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Good Hi, afternoon. Ryan. So Ryan, how will this year's donations from Give for Dreams support athletics? It will significantly support athletics. Uh, this year we are focused on increasing um, the opportunities for our student athletes. We want to make sure they have an incredible student athlete experience. So some of the areas that we're trying to focus on and prioritize are travel. Okay. Uh, allowing our student athletes to take more buses. Uh, <laughs> which I know <laughs> I've, Jessica I've knows had the well. mini bus experience. The, the mini bus and the vans. Um, you know, safer travel where our coaches aren't driving, especially right. late at night and it's raining. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, you know safer travel obviously provides just a better experience for our student athletes. Mm -hmm. Better equipment, new equipment. Uh, we're looking at renovating our weight room, which is really exciting. So some of this gift will go to that. 
Uh, we are prioritizing everything that can touch the experience of our student athletes. So travel, weight room, equipment, any of the academics, anything that's going to make a better experience. So that's what we are focused on for this year. That's awesome. So beautiful to hear that you're improving the athletic experience. I had a great one, but I know that it can get even better. Good. In August, you were hired as the new athletic director for Clayton State. What is your vision for athletics with this university? Wow. Um, <laughs> I would say what is our vision, because it's not, it's not just me. Uh, I would say our department's vision is pretty clear. We actually set up uh, what we call our core values. Uh, we just finalized those yesterday at a staff meeting, actually. So we set up our core values for our athletics department and basically defining who we are, where we're going, how do we want to conduct our business as a department. So it's definitely not my vision, it's our vision, because that's who we are. We are a team, we are one team, and uh, we are focused on culture, positive culture. We are focused on a culture of comprehensive excellence where everything we do, we do great. Obviously, we want to be the best in the Peach Bell Conference. That's right. We want to be the best in Division II, and I don't see why we can't. So we want to be the trendsetters in NCAA Division II. So we got a great staff, great coaches, wonderful student athletes, as you know. Uh, the, the sky is the limits, so we are very optimistic, very excited for the future of Laker Athletics. This is so exciting to hear. <laughs> this, isn't I, it for I you? I love it. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Yeah, this is all great news to hear. and so excited to hear where these dollars and funds will actually go to. So, Ryan, this is such a special day of giving. Tell our viewers, why should they give to athletics? Why not? Uh, we, <laughs> we have by far the best fans and supporters in the country, I can maybe the world, that. Laker Nation, right? <laughs> uh, why not give? If you are looking to get involved in athletics, this is a great opportunity. Uh, if you want to be a part of the team behind the teams, this is a great opportunity. Right. If you want to make a difference in the lives of student athletes, young men, young women, women, this is a great opportunity. Uh, like I said, we have the best fans. They do so much for us, the best supporters. They do so much for us. I know we're going to have a great day. Uh, we have a pretty high goal this year, $15,000. That's yeah. what we're about, ambition. That's, That's what right. Clayton State Athletics uh, is. We know our fans, our supporters are going to come through, and we know we're going to achieve those goals. But um, I would love for our fans and supporters to just get in, as involved as possible in our programs, our yeah. teams, get to know us. That's a great reason to give today. I love it. I awesome. love it. Thank you, Ryan, for spending some time with us to talk about your vision for athletics. Or should Absolutely. I say our vision? Our vision. As our vision. Our vision. That's right. And uh, we want to welcome you to Clayton State. Thank you. Glad to be here. Let's also give a shout out to our women's basketball team who are currently preparing right. for an NCAA tournament game against Wingate tomorrow. Good luck and go Lakers. Go Lakers. And uh, we've got a donation update. We do, we do have a donation update. I was just taking a gander at this and let's get a little drum roll going. As of right now, we are currently at $63,311. Wow. That is fantastic. And Spivey Hall won the Lunchtime Challenge sponsored by the CSU Foundation. They take home an extra $2,000. Two bands. Way to go, Spivey. Spivey Hall. Yeah. Right now, we're in the Afternoon Stretch Incentive Challenge sponsored by the President's Cabinet. The yes. project that receives the most unique donors will win the Incentive Challenge. And guess what? It's worth an extra 1000 So give now, give to athletics. I may be a little bit biased. <laughs> and let's take a look at a video that spotlights athletics and the Give for Dream project. Good job. Basketball is just, it affects like everything in me. So like, if I'm not doing good in basketball, then I'm not doing good just in general. So the passion is very strong. Uh, the biggest thing that drives me to achieve success in my studies is probably my mom. Like she's very strict on me. Obviously if I get a B, it's still okay. But for her, she has very high standards and I keep myself to that as well. I just always think about someone else out there is doing something as well. So someone else out there is making just as many shots as you, or someone else out there is working on making layups or doing something else. So it's like, what, what are you doing on your part? Career goals for the future, I like in the long run, I want to become a division one coach. Uh, that's always been my dream. If I'm not playing, I want to do something to help out other little kids. I feel like to be a champion, you have to 
you don't have to, but you, I feel like you have to be able to achieve certain goals and like still be kind of like a leader on the court and off the court. Champions, they, they, they do win, but also too, you have to keep like a positive mentality. Uh, when someone gives to support my dreams, it just, it makes me feel real good. Like it just shows that someone else cares. because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Please, it really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> So as you can see, our student athletes are champions, both inside and outside champions. And they need you to support their endeavors with your gifts. Let's welcome one of our student athletes who has benefited from the support of the athletics department, Aubrey McCray, a guard on the men's basketball team. Welcome, Aubrey. Welcome, thank you, thank you, happy to be here. Absolutely, so as a student athlete, I have to ask, how do you stay motivated in the classroom as well as on the court? Well, coming from a mother that who was a principal, which is an educator, and my dad being a high school coach, I feel like it's very important to like do good at school because you can't do one thing without the other. You can't play basketball without having a great, having good grades. It's a great right. attitude to have. I love that. Right. Student, and student before athlete. That's, that's what, what it is. And great familiar support too. You got that mom at home, the educator, dad is the coach. You got the perfect combination. Yes. A lot of pressure. It, a lot of it's good pressure. It's a lot good of good pressure. pressure. Nice. Um, so speaking of coaches, how has your coach and the whole athletics department supported you and helped you grow both as an athlete and a student? Okay, since since last year being being my first year at the school, the athletic program came with me with open arms saying like they got opportunities for me and as a man you just gotta take them. They've been with me 100 percent down the road and with this being my last year, I just wanna thank them for giving me a chance to like to flourish. That's oh, awesome. I love that. So you're earning your degree in liberal studies. What are your future goals once you graduate and that student athlete life is okay. over? Uh, well, it, at my athletic career is not technically over because I, I got good plans in mind. I, I, I plan to pursue to play professional basketball overseas, okay. but I have applied for grad school to get a business administration uh, degree. Yay. That is so, awesome. So you always got to have a plan B. I like that. That's really prepared. You don't want to just come out of athletics and have nothing waiting for you. So that's wait, right. That. So Aubrey, Give for Dreams is a day for the athletics department to raise money to support student athletes such as yourself. Right now, I want you to take this opportunity to tell our viewers why should they give to athletics? Well, because like 
they are a support system. They like, if they feel if there's anything going on around the campus or the student body or athletics, I feel like they, they, they got the green light to distribute whatever they want. But like, we always come with open arms and we're always grateful for their donations. Clayton State is a family, and Clayton State Athletics is yes. a mini family within that. So, that's right. Aubrey, thank you so much for sharing your experience as a student athlete with our viewers. And like he said, hey, we're a support system here. We're a support team. So just as Aubrey has that great support team at home, we want him and the other athletes to have it right here at Clayton State Home. So thank you again, Aubrey. No, thank you. Awesome. There's still time to make a donation if you haven't done so yet for Clayton State. The university is so special for so many reasons and your donations could really help hardworking students to achieve their goals. We're going to take a quick break and when we return we will head into our last hour, Student Affairs. Stay tuned. Basketball is just, it affects like everything in me. So like, if I'm not doing good in basketball then I'm not doing good just in general, so the passion is very strong. Uh, the biggest thing that drives me to achieve success in my studies is probably my mom. Like, she's very strict on me. Obviously, if I get a B, it's still okay, but for her, she has very high standards, and I keep myself to that as well. I just always think about someone else out there is doing something as well. So someone else out there is making just as many shots as you, or someone else out there is working on making layups or doing something else. So it's like, what, what are you doing on your part? Career goals for the future, I like, in the long run, I want to become a Division I coach. Uh, that's always been my dream. If I'm not playing, I want to do something to help out other little kids. I feel like to be a champion, you have to, you don't have to, but you, I feel like you have to be able to achieve certain goals and like still be kind of like a leader on the court and off the court. Champions, they, they, they do win, but also too, you have to keep like a positive mentality. Uh, when someone gives to support my dreams, it just, it makes me feel real good. Like it just shows that someone else cares. because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. Visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Yes, it really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs>
All right, so welcome to the Student Affairs Hours for Give for Dreams. To wrap up the show, we will talk today about some of the great programs and opportunities supported by Student Affairs. Right now, we have another donation update. Jessica, you're not going to believe this. We are over $78,341. Wow, that's amazing. We are reaching our goal. However, that's only 52%. So we still need you to keep giving and giving and, and giving. giving. And here's some ways you can give it. Giving is underway, so go online, call, stop by the UC and check us out. We're much cooler in person. Come see us. You can support the Student Affairs by texting GD410. Again, that's GD410. 410 to 555 Now, we've just kicked off our third incentive challenge for the day, the President's Cabinet. The President's Cabinet will give $1,000 wow. to the project with the most unique donors between now and 2 p.m. What a great incentive that is to give. That's a generous gift, so help a project earn some extra cash. Now, let's welcome our guests. I want to welcome our first guest, Dr. Shakir Abdul, our new Vice President of Student Affairs, and Dr. Alan Ward, our Assistant Vice President of Student Affairs. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for having us. So, Dr. Ward, firstly, can you tell us a little bit about the project Give for Dream Donations will fund in student, uh, student Affairs this year? Sure. The Student Affairs project this year is the Elaine Manglitz Student Emergency Fund. Many of the viewers will know that Dr. Manglitz was Dr. Abdullah's predecessor. She served as the Vice President for Student Affairs for many years, very concerned about student welfare, and this was named in her honor last year mm -hmm. upon her retirement. And the purpose of the Student Emergency Fund is to help students who have temporary need to be able to get a little bit of extra help that may not be in part of the financial aid package where they can either get a loan or a little bit of help to get them through the semester okay. uh, for a one-time uh, emergency that may happen in their life and it's benefited many many students. What a beautiful cause, so important. It is very important. So speaking of that, how has the Student Emergency Fund impacted our students so far? In many many ways there's just so many wonderful stories that we could share. Uh, what we have found is that students have come to us where they have had unanticipated anticipated health issues, they may have been involved in situations of domestic violence, mm -hmm. they may have lost their home and anticipated the place where they live, uh, many, many just things that you can't anticipate. And these students are talented, they're intelligent, and they can succeed, but they need a little help act, uh, financially to get through. And we carefully, the Dean of Students, uh, Jeff Jacobs, oversees with, with careful stewardship the funds that are allocated and make sure that we're giving to important needs that students have. And it's been amazing, the stories that have come out of the generosity of people who have donated to this fund in the past. It's been really great. What awesome. a fantastic way to give. So Dr. Abdullah, you're one of the newest members of our Laker family here as the new VP of Student Affairs. Can you tell us a little bit about your vision for this division and how you plan to enhance the student experience? Absolutely. So first of all, thank you for hosting us and really thank you for your work with Give for Dreams. We are really in a good position to be helpful for our students. I think my vision for student affairs really just mirrors the work that's already happened. I want to make sure that our students can be engaged. I want to make sure our students are ready to be successful once they leave this institution. I want to make sure that our students get the experiences that they need in order to thrive. Um, a great division of student affairs is going to engage our students from the time that they get here until well after they graduate. Career services is one of our units and they engage students from the time that they get here to well after they graduate. We're hosting our jobs and graduate school fair today so my vision is to keep going with these, these awesome efforts. I want to expand our leadership capacity. I want our students uh, to have opportunities to know what it is to be a global leader, to be an engaged leader. Uh, I want our students to know what it is to be physically fit. And I want our students to concentrate on holistic health and our holistic experience, our counseling services, our university health services. We've got resources in terms of the Veterans Resource Cer Cer uh, Center to help our veterans who have come back. So for me, my vision is for us to be the best that we can be and to make sure that our staff have opportunities for professional development and to make sure the students have access to all the kinds of activities they've dreamed about when they thought about coming to college and when they thought about Clayton State. So I'm really excited to be a part of such a strong team and to have folks who are already uh, leaders in their field and I want us to just become even better. So my vision is to help us grow and to help it. us be yeah. the best we that, can be. That's amazing to hear. We're both alumni and... Yeah, and I was so just going to say, as a member of the Student Affairs uh, Division here, 
That vision is one that I think we all share in, and we're so excited. I want to have you here um, and to continue our work with Dr. Ward. And so I have one last question for you. Okay. This is your plug time. <laughs> Tell the viewers, okay, <clears throat> why they should be given to this particular fund sponsored by the Division of Student Affairs. Absolutely, so you heard a little bit about um, the Manglitz Fund. The Manglitz Fund is really important to help close the gap, to help our students finish, because uh, just a small amount can go a really large way. So that's, that's right. one of the things that giving to student affairs will help us to uh, engage. Another piece is leadership development. I'm really uh, excited about the opportunity for us to expand our leadership uh, opportunities for students. So yes. I really want to see uh, a, a comprehensive program where students get an idea of what it means to be a servant leader. So students get an idea of, mean, of what it means to be engaged in uh, the, politi the political landscape of this region, of the state of Georgia, the city of Morrow, and, 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 and all of our surrounding areas. I want our students to know what it means uh, to be engaged in service learning. I want our students to be able to take advantage of all these opportunities that are there. But the bottom line is, Many of our activities are paid for by student fees. Right. One of the things we are really interested in doing here at Clayton State is keeping students' expenses down. So one of the ways to do that <laughs> is if donors, that. if donors step up yeah. and they contribute to the programs within student affairs and then we don't have to raise student fees and students can maximize their experiences here at the university. They can get involved in all the things that they want to do. Uh, I want to see our students uh, learning abroad. I want to see our students doing service learning abroad. I want to see our students taking advantage of our, our intramural, uh, our rec and wellness opportunities. Yes. I want to see students, um, you know, managing their conduct and being able to go through different trainings that help uh, help them regulate themselves. I want to make sure that we have additional services in terms of psychological services because right now uh, we contract out half time to a psychologist and a psychiatrist. I'm sorry, and we really would love to expand those services because mental yeah. health and so mental important. wellness is really really important, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in today. Uh, today's time. So Absolutely. these are all of the kind of things that we're really interested in doing. That was. So. Look, I'm over here in my oh, head. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying, I'm about to get my phone Preach. out and donate Preach. myself because that was an amazing <laughs> pitch and it's such an important topic. Thank you so yeah. much, Dr. Abdullah and Dr. Ward, for explaining the impact of the Student Emergency Fund on the lives of some of our students here. What you've heard about is the unexpected challenges that students sometimes face. And this is the reason that we really hope that you'll give today and make a difference. Let's take a look at a video that highlights the program that Student Affairs needs donations for today. I recall a student who was a single parent uh, with three kids and she was in her last semester uh, before graduation and she was in fact uh, staying with uh, a friend of her family's and that housing situation fell through very quickly. So we actually provided a temporary spot for her and her children uh, on our campus while she was able to explore uh, other options for a more permanent housing solution. So I, again, that was one that um, we feel really good about where the student was very close to graduation. She was able to work out uh, the situation with, while she was still able to uh, continue in her studies and, and ultimately graduate. College life is expensive. You have things to worry about, such as tuition, student housing payments, and that Clayton State University is a very unique campus in that we have a large majority of non-traditional students here who are trying to balance their life as students as well as their family life because they may have children or um, a husband or a spouse at home. The Student Emergency Fund helps reduce the financial burden students may face here on campus by providing grants or loans to students who are in need and help them achieve their goal of graduating and crossing the finish line. We're actually seeing a, a lot of students uh, who are coming in with instances of regular monthly expenses that they can't meet to keep things going and so they can stay in school. With the many expenses that college students have, uh, an adverse situation that arises can often be the difference between them continuing regularly in school and being on the street. So one of the things that we look at when we're working to support a student is we look to address that immediate situation, but also try to come up with longer term solutions for them so they can continue to persist through graduation.
What's wrong, Tatiana? Gosh, Omar, today's gift for dreams. I really want to help, but I just don't know how to give. Gee whiz, that is a problem. But you're in luck because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. Go online and visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Meet, it really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs>Emergency Fund is definitely an important program on campus to meet the needs of our students. To support the efforts of the Emergency Fund, Nessie's Pantry and the Laker Care Closet are two programs that try to help reduce the challenges of hunger, hunger on campus. Let's welcome Ashley Kakula, AmeriCorps Coordinator, and Kiana Jones, President of Alpha Phi Omega, to the show to talk more about these programs. Welcome Ashley and Kiana. Thank you. Hi ladies. Hello. Ashley, to start with, I've got a question for you. What are some of the challenges that students face that Nessie's Pantry and Laker Care Closet try to support? Right, so some of the challenges that we believe students face are just not having the needs that they um, need to go by on a day-to-day -day basis, to have to go to school, food, um, toiletries, and stuff like that. And Nessie's Pantry and Laker Care Closet are here to support students um, to get those items and to make sure they're able to not have to stress about certain things that they may need and not have to worry about choosing between paying a bill or getting groceries and stuff like that. So the little challenges that we don't talk about that students have um, below the surface needs to go to class day to day and not even know the person next to you may be hungry, so mm. stuff like that. Yeah, going to school is hard enough, mm -hmm. so That's having right. those little things to rely on it allows you to focus on your education. Or major okay. things, depending yeah. on who the students right. are. So, Kiana, you are the president of the Alpha Phi Omega National Service Fraternity Organization here. Tell us about the Laker Care Closet and why it is an important initiative for your organization. So, the Laker Care Closet was started in 2012 by a former member that were members at that time. And they felt like the campus needed something to help students because a lot of students are in need, but they were they didn't have the funds or they didn't have the ways to get the needs to meet, which is why the Laker Care Clause has non-perishable items, toiletry items, clothes, just any um, essential items that are needed for students to have on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's important to our organization because it's a part of two of our four fields of service, which is service to the campus and service to the community. Because since it is campus-based, a lot of organizations and students donate to the Lake Care Closet and also people in our community donate their well. Amazing. So why is it important for students to be aware of the issues such as hunger and homelessness on campus? Well, um, I think it's like a silent need. And Lake of Care Closet and Nessie's Pantry is just, it's anonymous. Um, they're located in different parts of the campus that students gather a lot, but it's also somewhere where you can just peek in real quick, grab something, and go. Um, and hunger and homelessness is something that we do speak about a lot, but it's something that students aren't able to speak about a lot and without feeling resentment mm -hmm. or feeling shame. So I think um, it's important for hunger and homelessness to be broadcasted in yeah. a way where Everyone's doing it. It's the Lake of Care Closet. Everyone can donate. Everyone can participate in actually getting something. Um, and it's no shame about it yeah. because it's out for our campus. It's for us. It's for us by us. Um, and it's not something that, you know, that. we Sorry. feel like we want everyone to participate in it. Yeah, there's no, get, there's no right. shame there's in no having shame in any it. issues. It's Everyone has right. times, hard yeah. times, and you shouldn't be embarrassed mm -hmm. to seek help. And I exactly. think when you talk about it, 
that's when it becomes a lot of work bring, is bring more awareness a lot of work. to it. I think that the other important thing she just said, it's for us, by us. That means this is our community, our this is our family, and we take care of family right. here. So I have one last question. It's been the question of the day for everybody. This is your opportunity. So Give for Dreams is a big deal. Today is a very special day. Why should we be given to this particular cause? Why pick you guys? Why pick us? Why pick us? <laughs> well, people should donate to the electric care cause and to the nesting pension because a lot of people, like she said, it is a silent thing that's happening on campus. A lot of students are in need. A lot of freshmen in particular, when it comes to campus, they're not used to, they have a hard time adapting to a lot of mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. because they're used to their parents having the basic needs that they need there, the toilet paper, the clothes, simple things like a toothbrush. So when they come to campus, when they run out of toothpaste, it's like they don't know what to do next. So they can just simply make a request for the Lake of Care Closet or go to one of the nesting pantries and get the items that they need easy. You heard it here. Thank you so much, Ashley and Kiana, for sharing some of the unique ways Clayton State University is solving hunger and homelessness here on campus. If you want to support these efforts, you need to give today. Donation update. All right, so it looks like we have a couple of people who have made their goals. Sims has met their goal. Athletics Woo! and Alumni Association yes, have all made go. their goals. <laughs> What's really awesome is we've had 257 different donors so far. That's incredible that that many people are giving today. That is amazing. Let's give a big thank you to everyone who has given and to those who haven't, there is still time. Your financial gift could really help hardworking students achieve their goals. We're going to take a break and when we get back, we'll talk about the university's comprehensive campaign as it begins to reach its goal. Thank you. I recall a student who was a single parent uh, with three kids and she was in her last semester uh, before graduation and she was in fact uh, staying with uh, a friend of her family's and that housing situation fell through very quickly. So we actually provided a temporary spot for her and her children uh, on our campus while she was able to explore uh, other options for a more permanent housing solution. So I, again, that was one that um, we feel really good about where the student was very close to graduation. She was able to work out uh, the situation with, while she was still able to uh, continue in her studies and, and ultimately graduate. College life is expensive. You have things to worry about such as tuition, student housing payments, and that Clayton University is a very unique campus in that we have a large majority of non-traditional students here who are trying to balance their life as students as well as their family life because they may have children or um, a husband or a spouse at home. The Student Emergency Fund helps reduce the financial burden students may face here on campus by providing grants or loans to students who are in need and help them achieve their goal of graduating and crossing the finish line. We're actually seeing a, a lot of students uh, who are coming in with instances of regular monthly expenses that they can't meet to keep things going and so they can stay in school. With the many expenses that college students have, uh, an adverse situation that arises can often be the difference between them continuing regularly in school and being on the street. So one of the things that we look at when we're working to support a student is we look to address that immediate situation but also try to come up with longer term solutions for them so they can continue to persist through graduation. What's wrong, Tatiana? Gosh, Omar, today is Gift for Dreams. I really want to help, but I just don't know how to give. Gee whiz, that is a problem. But you're in luck because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams.
or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> We're back. We're sitting here with Leonard Moreland, CSU Foundation board member and president and CEO of Heritage Bank. I mentioned at the break that Clayton State is near the end of completing its first ever comprehensive campaign, Greater In Mind, that launched a few years ago. Help me welcome Leonard to the show. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> so Clayton State first ever comprehensive campaign, Greater In Mind, is rapidly reaching its goal since it officially launched in 2017. Can you tell us a little bit about it? First of all, great news, we've exceeded our goal. Oh, oh that's even better. Yes. I've got to get some updated that, that question cards. Yeah, that doesn't mean <laughs> stop giving, though. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we, we have reached <clears throat> roughly 12 and a half million at this point. Uh, our goal was 12 million. Wow. The public portion of the campaign will end uh, June the 30th. But we still have a, a number of, of donors out there that we're expecting to, to commit and, uh, and make donations between now and then. So it's, it's going quite well. That's amazing. So fantastic to set a goal and not only meet it, but exceed it. And we keep going from there. Right. So speaking of that, the campaign is now focused on scholarships for students who may have the aptitude, but maybe not the financial means. How are these efforts ensuring that students can earn a valuable degree while reducing the cost of their college education? Great question. It, it is so important. As, as you know, the, the funding... We're, we're on air right now. But, but nice to see you. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to you in just a few seconds. <laughs> Technical difficulties, you know. Can't, can't be able to visit us. We it's like it. visitors. Everyone, Absolutely. We're, we're very popular individuals here at Clayton State. You may remember us. So let's just get back onto that fantastic answer okay. you were getting there with. Yes. I, it, the, the campaign is, is to help students. As you know, many of our students graduate um, with with mountains of debt. Um, I think the average is in the mid-20,000 range, wow. um, which is a terrible way to enter into the next phase of your life. So yeah. the campaign is centered around trying to ease that. Um, you know, over the years that I've been a part of the foundation, um, a lot of the tuition dollars, uh, a, a lot of the total student costs come from tuition dollars, but a lot also comes from the state. And the state has continued to cut back their amount of contribution towards education. And so more and more of it lies as a burden on the students. So our foundation just wants to do whatever we can to try to assist and, and to, to leave that burden to, to the best we can. And, so and needed and so necessary. It is. Yeah. So how do the gifts that people give during today and give for dreams support the goals of your campaign? Well, it, it's it's uh, it's our campaign, That's um, right. but you know, every everything goes into one bucket. Um, whether we're giving money today, whether we're giving money towards the a specific goal within the campaign, uh, it's it's just all one big bucket that's labeled "Let's help Clayton State students and faculty achieve their dreams," and and so. Um, Everything that's, that, that comes in today will be counted in the campaign uh, and again will continue to boost us well above our, our goals. Fantastic. It's all about making dreams real today. That's right. So, yes. Leonard, it's great to hear that Clayton State is investing in its students and it looks like Clayton State is going to continue to grow and support students' academic success in the future. As you've heard all day, giving is so important to make sure we support our students as they become successful leaders in their careers and communities after graduating from this university. I know by the end of today's program, you'll agree that Clayton State is an amazing place where dreams truly are That's made right. real. We're going to head to a break, but when we come back, we'll be joined by Claire once again to wrap up the show. The three will be reunited. The three amigos. So stay tuned. Stay tuned.
What's wrong, Tatiana? Gosh, Omar, today's gift for dreams. I really want to help, but I just don't know how to give. Gee whiz, that is a problem. But you're in luck because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678 466 4470. You can text to give. Make sure you know your project keyword and text 555 888. There's a text to give in progress. and visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dreams. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Nice. It really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We are wrapping up our Give for Dreams broadcast today. The gang's all here. The gang's this, all here. Yes. And, yes, and yes, they yes. know we're ending it because they let me get before a camera. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> not true, not true. We are just so excited that everybody has watched and donated and called and come by all throughout the day. This, I love Give for Dreams Day. Absolutely. I love it. Yes. What's, what's really neat is watching the sincerity of the excitement yes. of the ways, not only of the people up here, um, but people who support um, the students and the work of the faculty and the staff on this campus. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I'm grateful of people who keep coming back, <laughs> right? Can't get rid of me, can't get rid of me. I was gonna say, is it that we keep coming back or they just can't get rid of us? I, I think I, we just want to be here. It's I such agree. a meaningful day and all of us speak from experience. When you have a degree from this university and you have the positive student experience that we've all had yes. in all sorts of ways, whether it be as an athlete, a nurse, part of the student affairs, I think we just feel this loyalty to the university That's that right. makes us want to come back to give other people the same experience that we had. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. It connects us. It keeps us connected. And that's why We're days fine. like this is so important. And so as our broadcast comes to a close, we want to thank you for joining us today and, and see the innovative work and creativity and achievements of the students and faculty um, at this wonderful university. Yeah. So what have you guys enjoyed about the day today? Oh, my goodness. I, if I had to jump out there, I enjoyed interviewing the students yes. and hearing this reoccurring theme where we ask them, what does this day mean to you? What does giving for dreams mean to mm -hmm. you? And you know what they said? It means that someone believes in me. Yes. I can leave here and sleep well tonight knowing that every student that came about said, this is so important because someone believes in me. And for me, I guess the highlight would be coming back and seeing people and being reunited with people, but still knowing that no matter where our paths go in this life, whether we mm -hmm. stay in the country, whether we get a career, we're always going to be part of this Laker family. That's and right. it's so wonderful to hear that there's so many people on the same wavelength as us, yes. that everyone wants to make a difference to other students' lives. And you say there's no getting rid of us, and it's true because <laughs> we here. have this lifelong connection with yeah. this university. And I feel committed to give other people the experience that I Absolutely. had here. We don't want to get rid of you. <laughs> um, we are grateful for the opportunity to create an environment in which you interact with each other and you pair with us in a way that helps create a condition of your success um, and importantly of making your dreams real. So thank you. I, and you. I still and thank I, you all out there. The dream, oh, the dreams made real thing is just 
something I sort of started speaking about before I even came here. You know, I always talk about how the Dreams Made Real slogan was one of the things that really was a defining factor in why I chose this university because That's my awesome. dream was always to come play soccer in America. And so Clayton State truly made my dream real. But what I didn't realize when I signed up for this school was my dream was made real in so many different ways. It wasn't Sorry. all about soccer in the end. It was about making lifelong relationships. It was about you know, getting a great degree, being right. pushed and prepared for a career that I love. So Dreams Made Real isn't just some slogan that's it's attractive, slogan. It's, it's real. It's, it's a reality, it's a statement of truth, a yeah. fact for everyone here. So that's what's beautiful about this day, I think. And it happens because people like you give during events like Give for Dreams. Just because we're wrapping up our broadcast doesn't mean that Give for Dreams is over. This is 24 hours. It started at eight o'clock this morning. It goes through eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Yes, that's right. 24 hours, 13 projects that you can choose from where you want your dollars and to Claire go. And Claire will still be awake. Absolutely. <laughs> I just came off of working night shift, so my body doesn't know there you what go. time it is. Okay. You'll be refreshing sure. the page constantly. Yes. How much money have we got? Click, 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 click. Well, and then we're having an alumni social tonight at yes. North Cantina in Atlanta. So excited. That's going to be so much fun. Um, so come out and hang out with us there. You can make a donation there. Hint, hint, hint. Um, you can... Yeah, refresh your memory on all the different projects on the Gift for Dreams website. Um, you can certainly use our phone number to call. We have um, our third challenge that is still in effect for the next mm, 45, 50 minutes. That's the President's Cabinet Challenge. Yes. So the project that has the greatest number of individual donors. You can't just like donate a dollar over and over again. <laughs> nice try. And, and, I know, and, right? which <laughs> nice I have, try. And, and to my colleagues, I have pledged to match their contributions. Oh, oh wow. that's another that's incentive. Oh, what do you know? Members of staff get okay. giving. Remember you get it matched. That's exactly it. So the project that has the greatest number of unique donors by 2 o'clock, that's an additional $1,000. So that's a go. huge deal. That makes such a big difference. And then, you know, we're going to wrap up our broadcast, but there's there are so many other ways to get connected here on campus with Give for Dreams right. today. And okay, the conversation so, isn't over, right? So you right. can join us from 2.30 to 4 p.m. outside by the lake at the University Center. We'll be accepting donations for Nessie's Pantry, and we will have information on how you can still Hashtag Give for Dreams mm -hmm. because it's hashtag National Pie Day. We'll have some pie treats. Everyone's happy about that, right? <laughs> and so do join us at the Baker University Center. Yes, um, yes, um, definitely. For Give for Dreams. And for, for pie. pie Day. Pie, people, come on. It's pie. Pie. We should have had pie here all day. Oh, man. <laughs> Man, now epic you fail. tell me. The, the, epic the snack fail. section wasn't quite <laughs> exquisite oh, well. enough. <laughs> we did have cookies, though, that were really good. Yeah, so they thank were you to good. CSU Catering for that. Yeah. Good. All right. So. so, once again, remember all of the great ways you can continue to give. You can go online. You can call by phone. You can visit us. We're here. You can yes. come and visit us in the University Center, the James M. Baker University Center. You can text. I love that text feature. I, I did I that did it, while and I was, was on amazing. my break. I texted So, to look give. at the screen right now. You will see all the different codes you can use. Um, I would go for G4D10 and if nobody else plugs it again, G4D10, Student Affairs, um, <laughs> or all the other um, great areas to give to. They're but make sure you text all just it. as worthy as each other. They and remember, are. it goes That's into the right. same pot. That's yeah. the most important thing. It helps. No matter it where helps you our give, students. some student some is going to be benefited benefit. in a yes. positive way. That's right. So That's as much as we have some friendly banter, wherever it goes, we appreciate you giving Absolutely. today. Absolutely. And to all our right. students. It's All right, students. so we're going to wrap it up with a bang. We're going to do it on three, and we hope that everybody in here is going to yell it with us, right? All right. Okay, That's one, everyone in here. One, two, three. Give it for dreams! dreams. Because there are four easy ways to give. Give us a call at 678-466-4470. You can text to give. Make sure 
you know your project keyword and text 555-888. There's a text to give in progress. Go online and visit us at clayton.edu forward slash give for dream. Or swing by on campus and visit us at the University Center. Please, it really is that easy. Yeah, and remember, giving ends tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you got plenty of time. <laughs> Thank you.